chapter 111 the footage shown was quite a shocking one. Shot from a CCTV camera placed high up on a stretch of road, the viewer could see how deserted this unknown street was it was so quiet that, even after the footage had been greatly sped up, only a handful of cars drove by. One might even end up suspecting that the road was located in the sparsely populated outskirts of a city or even in a rural area. The sped up footage was slowed down greatly. And then, it happened. A saloon appeared on the edge of the screen. It was moving fast enough that even when the footage had been slowed down, one could still sense its high speed. But then, in the blink of an eye ear broken bar, a black thing suddenly appeared before the speeding car. It was a dark life form standing on two feet like a person. The car couldn't slow down sufficiently with this sudden development. However, no such thing as the car and the unknown life form colliding ever occurred. Just before the collision happened, the car suddenly flew up in the air. The dark life form easily flipped the mid-sized saloon speeding towards it with one hand, and then, dragged the unconscious driver out from the wreckage to devour the poor guy from the head. Chomp. Chomp a broken bar. That surely would have been the noise most likely to be captured by a MIG, had the CCTV camera been equipped with one. The footage came to an end there. Jin Wu shifted his gaze away from the giant TV screen filling up an entire wall of the association president's office, and to Gagun Hu is sitting on the other side of the table. The older man slowly put the remote down. 300 people. Unlike some others, he didn't speak about the neighboring nation's misfortune with an easy-going attitude. That one and managed to kill that many people. Were the Japanese too slow to respond? That's not correct. Gagun Hui shook his head. From what I hear, the Japanese hunters only took 30 minutes to get to the location. But, in that short period of time, a small village was wiped off the map. Japan boasted one of the most advanced hunter systems in all of Asia, and a country like that had to experience such a level of devastation, so what would happen if an ant entered the South Korean border? Gagun Hu had viewed that footage multiple times already, but he still was overcome with a chilling premonition of an impending crisis every time he did. A before it's too late. We need to destroy the ants once and for all. The subjugation operation would get underway in four days' time. The Japanese had been demanding the release of the final list of all Korean hunters participating in the operation for a few days now. However, using his authority as the leader of the Korean side, Gagun Huey delayed the announcement of the final list. The reason for that was simple. Because no one could get in touch with Jin Wu until now. And so, after a long wait, the moment of the list being finalized had arrived. Gagun Hua continued on with a trembling heart. We'll go to Jeju Island and get rid of the ants found there. He formed a pleading expression next. And that is why we need your help, Sung Jin Wu Hunter Nim. Next up, Gagun Hua's expression shifted to one of anxiety. If Jin Wu refused to participate, then there was nothing anyone could do. He was no longer affiliated with the association and he was not duty-bound to carry out the demands of the association, either. In other words, the final decision rested solely on his whim. After lengthy deliberation, he opened his mouth. Yeah broken bar. After ending the meeting with the association president, Jin Wu stood up from the seat to leave, only to sense something and shifted his head in that direction. A what was that just now? In a place not too far from here. He sensed clashes of magical energy. A could it be a dungeon break? Initially, he suspected a dungeon break happening nearby, but he soon realized that wasn't the case. He couldn't sense any presence of monsters, only the magic energy coming from various hunters. Instead, did something happen? Gagun Hu had stood up from his seat first and walked over to the doorway to bid Jin Wu goodbye, only to turn around and question him when the youth failed to move from the spot. Well, I don't think it's anything serious, but a broken bar. It seems that hunters are fighting each other nearby. But, that can't be. Gagun Hewitt chuckled loudly. Which foolhardy hunters would dare to fight each other near the association's HQ? There was no way such a thing would happen. Ah no, wait a broken bar. The direction of Sung Jin Wu Hunter Nim is looking at a broken bar. A possibility formed in Gun Hui's mind. I believe that rank S hunters are doing some light exercises in the gymnasium. Maybe you're talking about that? A, a broken bar light exercises. 
is it? If that was the case, then for sure, the continuous yet restrained clashes of magical energy made sense. Jin Wu nodded his head. I see. Gagun Hu's eyes looking at the youth were filled with undisguised surprise. A he can sense something like that from this distance? The association's gymnasium was designed to greatly minimize the amount of magic energy leaking outside. In actual reality, even Gagun Hu himself couldn't sense anything. But then, not only had Jin Wu sensed the minuscule amount leaking out from there, he even correctly guessed that different magic energies were clashing with one another, too. A just how highly attuned are his senses? It was simply impossible to even take a wild guess. A broken bar dot R, right. Would you like to take a look if you're interested? Gagun Huey made a quick suggestion. It was a rare event to find all the rank S hunters in South Korea gathered in one place. Personally witnessing the abilities of other rank S hunters from the sideline would do a world of good to Sung Jin Wu, who had become a rank S himself only recently. I believe that Mr. Gota Ryuji is also present there. Jin Wu was thinking of taking a look see with an open mind, only to stop in his tracks. If you say Gota Ryuji, do you mean a broken bar? Yes, it is him. If you were a hunter, I know. Even if you weren't a hunter, eh, you'd have at least heard of that name once, the name that belonged to one of the most powerful hunters in existence. It is indeed that Gota Ryuji. He's currently staying in the country to aid in building a good repertoire and a sense of camaraderie in both the Korean and Japanese participants. Since he's planning to leave tomorrow, if you don't meet him today, you might not get another opportunity in the future. Not only were Korea's best hunters gathered in one place, but even Japan's best was also here too. Eh, obviously, I can't miss this chance. Jin Wu accepted Gigun Hui's suggestion with a deeply interested expression. At the same time, Gota Ryuji was doing his very best to stifle a yawn. Ah this is supposed to be the abilities of Korea's best? How laughable. No. They were actually pitiful. The assessment of a laughable was made from an objective point of view while the a pitiful bit came from him adding a bit of sympathy to that initial assessment. A rather than leaving the safety of the country to these people's hands, wouldn't it be far better to be under the protection of us, the Japanese, instead? Go to Ryuji formed a leery smile and surveyed the Korean rank S hunters. Out of all the rank S hunters he met in Korea so far, only one seemed to be somewhat a useful to his eyes. A her name's supposed to be Cha Hyun right? Even then, her abilities were only around the level of Japan's upper rank hunters. She fell way, way short when compared to the best hunters Japan could offer. A but, there's no helping it, is the South Korea was a small nation, and its population wasn't that vast, either. Also, the person who had awakened the greatest ability within the populace just so happened to be an old man who didn't have that many days to live and couldn't even fight properly. A if it's Gagun Huey, then he might be able to contend with some of our best on a similar level, but a broken bar. He could say that the Koreans had drawn a short straw on this one. In any case, he was done with assessing the capabilities of the Korean hunters. He had completed the real reason for his extended stay in Korea. A they wouldn't even survive for five minutes if we withdraw during the subjugation. Thinking that there was no more reason to stick around, go to Ryuji turned around to leave, but then, he spotted someone unfamiliar walking closer from the entrance of the gymnasium. A ma broken bar. Go to Ryuji's brows quivered greatly. He hadn't realized the approach of this unknown man even though they were in close proximity already. He was looking at the man with his own eyes, yet he still couldn't sense the other person's presence at all. Is he an assassin type hunter? Go to Ryuji asked the association employee tasked with translation next to him. Who is that man? The employee fidgeted with his glasses and stared for a long time before finally recalling who the unknown man was and formed a smile. Ah, he's the newly registered rank S hunter. Ah broken bar. So, that man was that reawakened with no known reliable information available? Go to Ryuji was thinking of spending the remaining time in Korea to unearth more about this man, but he now thought that this was actually better for him. He formed a bright smile and asked the association employee again. Seems like he's a pretty excellent assassin, pardon? When the employee stared back with a strange expression, Gota Ryuji realized something was off. Did I make a mistake? Oh, number. That's not it. But, 
Well a broken bar. The employee pointed at Jin Wu and spoke. He's actually a mage type hunter. Mr. Goto. Ano freaking way. Carrying a disbelieving expression. Goto Ryuji quickly accessed the Korean Hunters Association website and went through the list of rank S hunters there. The automated translation app allowed him to read the information on the Korean rank S hunters right away. Sung Jin Wu, rank S, mage type. There it was. The profile image and the person's face were a perfect match. A eh, he's really a mage type. Go to Ryuji got inwardly stunned by this and hurriedly raised his shocked face. By then, that man was already standing nearby. A eh, so, this guy is Go to Ryuji. Ha. Huh. Jin Wu only needed one glance to recognize Japan's most powerful hunter. He was a tall man with a sharp sense of fashion. His beard was trimmed neatly, too. At a casual glance, one might mistakenly think that he was a famous Japanese actor. A eh, but, why does he keep looking at me like that? Just as Jin Wu was beginning to feel a bit unhappy at the continued gaze, the Japanese man performed a simple greeting with his eyes first. Did he stare like that because they had never met before until now? Jin Wu didn't think too much about it and reciprocated the light greeting, and took a look around. In the middle of the gymnasium, the shirtless Baek Yun Ho and a hulking middle-aged man with a huge frame were having a sparring session. Excluding Goto Ryuji, everyone else present was looking on at that with deeply interested expressions. Swish. Baek Yun Ho slapped away the hand of the quickly approaching man, spun his lower half and sent out a powerful low kick. Pa. Contrary to expectations, though, the one to frown was Baek Yun Ho. A -o -o. Jin Wu could tell why. In that briefest of moments, the giant man utilized a body reinforcement type skill to defend his legs. Judging from that huge body and the skill he used just now, he seemed to be a tanker type, but his agility stat must have been rather out of the norm as well. Should Jin Wu chalk that one up to that man being a rank S? The giant middle-aged man smirked. Instructor Beck, it won't do for a young man like you to be this powerless. I'm not an instructor, Ma. Instructor Nim. The giant man referred to as Ma. Instructor Nim chuckled genially and grabbed the belt of his dobok. Maybe because a guy with a physique of a sumo wrestler was wearing a dobok, it kind of felt a bit out of place to Jin Wu's eyes. Well, in that case, the giant man fixed his attire for a moment before pouncing forward again, and Baek Yun Ho unleashed his magic power to counterattack. Both of them were carrying joyous expressions. As instructor Ma pushed forward, and as Baek Yun Ho was pushed back, they both looked to be enjoying themselves. It seemed that they were relishing this rare opportunity to unleash some of their powers that had to be restrained most of the time in this gathering of rank S awakened. Even then, if Mr. Baek Yun Ho were to fight seriously, Mr. Ma Dong Wook wouldn't be able to endure it. Choi Jong In walked in closer to Jin Wu and spoke up. The latter turned his head to look, prompting the former to nod his head in a greeting. Jin Wu reciprocated the greeting, and their conversation continued on from there. That person wearing Dobok is the Shining Star's Ma Dong Wook. A.R. Jin Wu was thinking to himself that he had heard of that name before and it turned out that man was the master of the shining star. He nodded his head and threw a question. It's not like he needs to go easy on his opponent, so why is Master Beck hiding most of his powers? He finds it a bit troublesome to reveal his powers in front of too many ice a broken bar. Chairman Beck transforms into a real monster when he fights seriously, you see. Back in front of the red gate, Beck Yun Ho did reveal a pair of beast-like eyes to Jin Wu. A so. It's not just his eyes that can transform, A. Eh? Just like Becky Yun Ho's ability to transform, one would hear about top hunters possessing rather unique abilities every now and then. In a way, they were the possessors of monster-like powers. From other people's perspective, Jin Wu thought that he'd be seen like that, too. A guy who can morph into a monster, and a guy who can summon monsters to broken bar. When he thought about others finding him mystifying, just like how he thought of Baek Yun Ho's powers being weird, Jin Wu couldn't help but smirk softly to himself. But, that was all. He only found Baek Yun Ho's ability to transform strange and nothing else. There was nothing interesting to look at in regards to the sparring between Baek Yun Ho and Ma Dong Wook. I so slow. Jin Wu didn't even need to concentrate, 
Yet he could clearly read the attacks and counters of both men. It was then, a broken bar, sensing something was off. But Qian Ho stopped moving. Ma Dong Wook also stopped at the same time, as well. And their gazes shifted to Jin Wu simultaneously as if they had made a prior arrangement. Maybe it was because Jin Wu's boredom was too easy to see. A, a broken bar, a broken bar. But then again, too many people were looking at Jin Wu the same way for him to think that was the case. However, he got to figure out the reason soon enough. It's not me, but behind me, a broken bar. When he looked back, Gota Ryuji was standing there. The light glinting in his eyes was rather suspicious. The interpreter next to the Japanese man spoke on behalf of Gota Ryuji. Hunter Nim, Mr. Gota wishes to speak to you for a moment. Jin Wu knew that Gota Ryuji was standing nearby, but because he hadn't expected to be addressed at all, he could only form a confused expression. At ah, this guy, I sensed that he didn't seem right since a while ago. But now a broken bar. Did Jin Wu's unhappiness get transmitted? Because Gota Ryuji quietly threw out a rather unexpected question. Will you have a sparring match with me? Chapter 112 There wasn't any deeper meaning behind his actions. Gota Ryuji came to South Korea to personally confirm the capabilities of the top Korean hunters with his own eyes. And now, he had developed a bit of curiosity after discovering someone a bit unique out of the lot. That was all. A I'll soon find out whether he's really a mage or not. Gota Ryuji refused to accept that the man standing right in front of his eyes wasn't a melee type hunter. He needed more A data. In order to eliminate any and all form of unexpected variations, he simply had to acquire more data on Sung Jin Wu. A well, half of it is for fun thought U for broken bar. Go to Ryuji smirked to himself. The interpreter heard what the Japanese hunter had to say, jumped up in surprise, before hurriedly asking a question. M. Mr. Goto, are you sure about this? Please translate what I said to this man adverbatim. B. But, even then a broken bar, will there be a problem? Go to Ryuji asked back in a teasing tone. His voice seemed to ask why shouldn't he participate in the proceedings when the Korean hunters were already doing some a light exercises. The interpreter continued to sweat buckets, before giving up in the end and replied to him. Yeah broken bar I understand. He turned his head and met Jin Wu's questioning gaze. The interpreter hesitated before opening his mouth. Mr. Goto is asking a broken bar if you don't mind a training with him a broken bar. There was no need for an extra explanation on what that training was supposed to be. Jin Wu's gaze shifted over to Goto Ryuji. The Japanese man was waiting for an answer with an unreadable smile on his face. You want to find out more about my skill level? Is that it? There was no way that the world-famous goat to Ryuji would do something so eye-catching just to show off his abilities. If that was indeed his aim, he'd have asked either Choi jong in or Baek Yun ho the leaders of the number one and two South Korean guilds respectively, instead. A I don't know what you're planning here, but a broken bar. Judging from the undisguised stare from earlier on, it was more than likely that Go to Ryuji's interest was on Jin Woo. Even then. He didn't feel displeased by the Japanese hunter's abrupt suggestion. No, rather than that, he was genuinely intrigued by the prospect of the fight itself. He wanted to test out the strength he got to raise inside the demon's castle, and he was also curious about the abilities of Japan's top hunter, too. Indeed, it wasn't only Gota Ryuji who was curious about his opponent's strength. A, a broken bar. Dot, dot. Gota Ryuji stopped smiling as a thin frown formed on his forehead. A he's smiling? He expected Jin Wu to become flustered and then eventually try to back out. But then, the Korean hunter simply displayed a certain relaxed vibe. Instead, was there something he felt confident of? Or, was he smiling wryly after finding the current situation troublesome to handle? The answer was revealed soon enough. Jin Wu told something to the interpreter and the latter jumped up pretty high in shock right away. Next up, the interpreter looked as if he was doing his best to dissuade the youth, while Jin Wu was all smiles as he tried to calm the former. Instead, since they were talking in Korean, Gota Ryuji couldn't understand a word being spoken and as a result, a frown grew progressively deeper on his face. 
A what are they even talking about a broken bar? It should have only been either a yes or a no. Why was the interpreter sweating buckets like that over a question with only two exceedingly simple available answers? Just as Gota Ryuji's patience was about to run out, the interpreter spoke up while continuously sneaking glances at Jin Wu. Yum, excuse me, Mr. Goto a broken bar. If only there were no eyes watching right now. Go to Ryuji would have shouted at the man to stop wasting time and hurry up with it. Forcibly maintaining his smile meant that Go to Ryuji's brows were quivering greatly, as he waited for the interpreter's next words. Sung Jin Wu Hunter Nim agreed to your proposal, however a broken bar. However, he says he has a condition. A condition? Not only had the opponent failed to lower his tail and cower, but he also accepted the challenge straight away and even put up an extra condition, as well, it was go to Ryuji's turn to feel somewhat flustered now. And what is this condition? Well, Sung Jin Wu Hunter Nim said that a broken bar. The interpreter took one last look at Jin Wu, and the latter nodded his head. A broken bar. He'll agree only on the condition that Mr. Goto gives his all. Go to Ryuji's stare immediately shifted to Sung Jin Wu. Is he being serious? Seeing the expression on Jin Wu's face. One could tell that he wasn't kidding around. Go to Ryuji tilted his head. A way to broken bar maybe he doesn't know who I am, but, that couldn't be. Even if he didn't know before, the interpreter should have provided an explanation just now. Even then, for him to not cower and back off A was this the case of arrogance or a mistaken belief in himself? A A broken bar dot this might be fun. The smile was already wiped clean from go to Ryuji's mug. He was thinking of matching the opponent's pace and ending things after checking out Sung Jin Wu's skill, but now, his thoughts had changed. Thankfully, with a rank as healer nearby, there shouldn't be any big gay accidents either. All right. I accept, Hock. The interpreter's face paled immediately. Hunter Sung Jin Wu had just advanced to rank AS, so he might not be able to contain his overflowing passion. But why was Mr. Goto, who had experienced all sorts of trials and tribulations, behaving like this? Unfortunately, the atmosphere had already gone past the point of no return. Who's that guy next to the Japanese hunter? Isn't he a broken bar hunter Sung Jin Wu? What's this? Are they going to spar or something? Soon, the rank as hunters and association employees within the gymnasium all gathered around the two men glaring at each other. As everyone was immersed in the developing situation, half of them looking on with worry while the other half in anticipation, Cha Hee-in also stood next to the hunters and looked on at the duo. A will he be finally a broken bar? Jin Wu's opponent was a man who managed to stand at the top of Japan, a country with over 20 rank S hunters. As for Jin Wu himself, if one excluded the years he spent as a rank E, then he should be considered as a newbie who had been a rank S for only a few days now. It'd be the right thing to stop Hunter Sung Jin Wu from continuing on any further. From Cha Hee-in's perspective as someone affiliated with the Hunter's Guild, Sung Jin Wu was a benefactor who saved the lives of an entire team consisting of her guild's elite men and women. She wasn't some monoless woman who'd do nothing and watch a benefactor get hurt from the sidelines. However, she kept recalling the events of that day whenever she thought about dissuading him. A broken bar dot the look Jin Wu gave her telling her not to interfere even when he was facing off against over 100 high orcs and a boss of a rank A dungeon. When recalling that powerful, determined stare, she felt her chest palpitate, and unexplainable anticipation bubbled up in her heart. That was why she couldn't readily step forward, only to bite down on her lower lip in nervousness. It was then, are you feeling okay today with other hunters around you? Before she had time to notice it. But Kian Ho was already next to her to ask that question. They had gone on several raids together, so he knew very well of her strange physical condition. Well, it's not like I'll be able to continue blocking my nose in Jeju Island, so broken bar. Hearing her answer, but Kian Ho nodded his head. It was her turn to ask next. You said before that you're an acquaintance with Hunter Sung Jin Wu. Yes, yes. Cha Hee-in remembered that the White Tiger Guild also received Hunter Sung Jin Wu's help in the past, just like her own guild did. In that case, shouldn't you try to stop Mr. Sung Jin Wu? I guess that's the normal way of thinking. After all, 
The opponent today was none other than Goto Ryuji. Chahi in tilted her head. If so, then why a broken bar? But Kian Ho shifted his gaze and met her eyes before replying to her. It's the same reason as yours, Cha Hunter Lim. Flinch. Cha He In felt as if her inner secrets has been exposed by Baek Yun Ho just now. Her always taciturn expression displayed just a hint of change. I don't a broken bar. Don't you feel this strange anticipation in the air? A broken bar. Dot she couldn't deny that. Even now. Her heart was racing with the singular thought of a if it's Hunter Sung Jin Wu, then he might have broken bar. Filling up her head. It's the same story for me. But Yun Ho replied with a grin and looked back in Jin Wu and go to Rai Uji's direction. His expression was filled with barely checked anticipation. A if Hunter Sung is really an awakened who can grow stronger as per my expectation, then a broken bar. This could be the chance to confirm that theory. Go to Rai Uji raised his fist first. The interpreter standing nearby hurriedly left their side. Two rank S hunters were about to have a smackdown. Not only that, one of them happened to be referred to as Japan's best, as well. A normal person would die simply from being too close in this situation. Making sure that the interpreter had run off to a safe enough distance, Jin Wu belatedly put his dukes up as well. No, that's what he tried to do. But then a broken bar, swish. Without a moment's delay, go to Rai Uji's fist flew past where Jin Wu's head had been a blink ago. The Japanese man's eyes grew wide. A I missed? The attack was meant to floor Jin Wu in one go and help Go to recover his damaged pride, but now, it was all for nothing. Jin Wu evaded the punch by tilting his head out of the way, and then, he easily created some distance between them. His reaction speed was surprisingly fast. A and you still claim to be a mage after that? What a bloody laughable notion that was. Indeed. Go to Rai Uji's eyes weren't mistaken. He didn't know the reason for the Korean Association hiding that man's true abilities, but without a doubt, Sung Jin Wu was a melee type hunter. Not only that, definitely an assassin, too. His agile movements and his silent steps were all the proof needed. You may be able to fool the others, but you can't hide the truth from me. The corner of Go to Rai Uji's lips arched up. A allow me to peel off another layer of yours. A broken bar dot right until everything you possess is brought up to the surface. For the first time in a long, long while, Go to Rai Uji was feeling genuinely pumped up. After taking some distance away from the aggressive Japanese hunter, Jin Wu stood still and listened to his heart beat. Thump, thump, thump a broken bar. Indeed. His heart was beating faster. He could sense power on another level compared to other hunters from Goto Ryuji. However, the emotion filling up Jin Wu's heart whenever Goto Ryuji's unbelievable aura touched his skin was this strong sense of belief in himself. A so, that guy is the best in Japan a broken bar. Only now could he truly recognize how much he had changed while raising his level to 97. His strong confidence was clearly visible on his face now. On the other hand, go to Rai Uji's expression was hardening. A eh, he's smiling again? How dare he, in front of me? Go to Rai Uji spat out a heavy breath. The scarcely believable amount of magical energy he emitted began to heavily press down the surrounding air. Hunters watching on were jolted by a nasty surprise. A eh, shouldn't we stop them before something happens here? A eh, Goto Rai Uji, maybe he's thinking of really going for it now? However, there was a thin smile on Jin Wu's face. This was what he wanted, anyways. Goto Rai Uji saw that Jin Wu showed no signs of cowering even after he had unleashed his fearsome level of magic power and felt something welling up from deep within. His eyes gleamed dangerously just then. Even before other hunters had the chance to step forward and stop this bout, go to Rai Uji pounced like an angry predator. The distance closed up in an instant. Go to Rai Uji reached out with his hand. Jin Wu leaned back in the nick of time and evaded the attack. A, -a broken bar. Go to Rai Uji's eyes trembled imperceptibly. A he dodged. Was that also a coincidence? or a broken bar, even though many thoughts fleeted in and out of his head, he didn't stay his hands and continued to rain down his attacks. Too bad, not one of them could connect to his target. Jin Wu always managed to dodge by a hair's breadth or repelled the incoming hits away. A how could this be broken bar? Cold sweat drops formed on Go to Rai Uji's forehead. Go to Rai Uji and his brilliantly flashy attacks, 
and Jin Wu who managed to dodge everything by the smallest margins imaginable. Other hunters watched the duo and expressed their genuine admiration. That's some fierce attacks, alright. Hard to follow those movements with my naked eyes. Look, even Hunter Sung Jin Wu is enduring pretty well, no? Right, it's already pretty remarkable that he can evade the attacks from Japan's best to that extent. Cha Hee In shook her head multiple times inwardly. Ah no. Hunter Sung Jin Wu isn't enduring anything right now. Others could only see that Jin Wu was being endlessly led around by Gota Ryuji's continuous stream of attacks, but in reality, it was completely the opposite. Cha Hee In swallowed her saliva, feeling rather astonished at the moment. A eh, he's actually leading Goto in such a way that Goto has no choice but to keep attacking. If she was not wrong about this, then a broken bar Hunter Sung Jin Wu had matched his own pace to the opponent's so he could figure out more about who he was facing here. Such a thing was only possible if his own level of abilities was several times greater than that of his opponents. A eh, how can that even make any sense he broken bar? But, that nonsensical event was actually unfolding right before her eyes. And now, she couldn't help but think that the real reason to stop this sparring wasn't that Hunter Sung Jin Wu might find himself in danger, but the other way around a broken bar. Just as Cha Hee In's thoughts arrived at this point, she discovered Be Kyun Ho next to her shuddering non-stop. See Chairman Bika broken bar? She called out to him in a soft voice, but he didn't respond. His eyes were glued to Jin Woo and nothing else. She tried to read his expression, only to get stunned by what she saw. Ah his eyes a broken bar. Be Kyun Ho's eyes were gleaming in yellow color like that of a wild beast. His vertical slit eyes were trembling softly in shock. She looked on with a worried expression on her face, but he didn't even notice that someone was looking at him right now. Be Kyun Ho was seeing everything clearly with his A eyes of the beast. A E A broken bar. I was right. Jin Wu's current level of power was incomparably greater than back when they last met in front of the association building. A A broken bar. A hunter who can grow stronger. Be Kyun Ho's entire body shook from the unbridled shock. It was then a broken bar. Ah, Be Kyun Ho had been paying his utmost attention to Jin Wu all this time, and when it happened. He unconsciously spat out a frightened gasp. Cha Hee In next to her also sensed this deeply chilling aura and hurriedly shifted her gaze. Ah, a few seconds ago broken bar. Go to Rai Ujin knew better than anyone else here that he had been suckered into Jin Wu's pace. He had been always referred to as the A strongest back home, so it felt like his pride had been shoved down the gutter in its entirety by this development. A eh, how dare he do this to me a broken bar. The attack that he meticulously aimed at the opening also missed its mark, as Jin Wu narrowly avoided it at the last possible second. Go to Rai Uji grew enraged, and murderous intent began filling up his eyes. A eh, I'll kill him. Jin Wu's own eyes grew wider. He could acutely sense Go to Rai Uji's killing intent pricking his skin. A eh, murderous intent? Jin Wu's heart nearly fell to the pit of his stomach. Then, if someone formed a murderous intent towards him, the system would float up a message and issue an emergency quest right afterwards. What if he got a quest telling him to kill Goto Ryuji here broken bar? Tearing. A mechanical beep resounded out right at that moment, and Jin Wu quickly looked up. Warning. Discovered a subject with murderous intent nearby. Thankfully, it was still a warning message. There was no emergency quest. Like back then with Huang Dong Sok or Kung Tae Sik. However, a broken bar, swish, go to Rai Uji's outstretched hand, aimed at Jin Wu's eye, narrowly missed and ended up slicing his cheek just a little. If his reflexes that had reached the absolute limit didn't react in time and tilt his head out of the way, he might have really lost his eye just now. It was an attack that clearly carried the intent to kill and it was clearly aimed at a vital spot of the human anatomy. Such a thing would never be accepted during a training match like this. Grid. In the blink of an eye, the atmosphere changed. Ah, Be Kyun Ho unconsciously spat out a frightened gasp. The first person to sense the abrupt shift in the atmosphere was actually Goto Ryuji, however. Unfortunately for him, although his body understood the change, his head could not. The chilly air roused sleeping goosebumps to break out all over his body, and all the hair on the back of his neck stood up. He had never, ever felt like this before. Ah this, what is these a broken bar? Even before his brain had the time to process anything, 
Jin Wu grabbed his wrist, hard. Gota Ryuji tried to yank his arm out with all his might, but it wouldn't budge. A what kind of strength is these a broken bar? His gaze briefly lingered on his wrist, before moving on to Jin Wu's face. And he found an icy cold glare. But what caught Gota Ryuji's attention even more than Jin Wu's cold eyes were his right shoulder and his raised right arm. Jin Wu's arm was cocked back by a lot of tightly clenched fist. At the end of that arm was taking an aim at Gota Ryuji's unguarded face. The air sinking lower all around Gota Ryuji pressed down on his shoulders. He suddenly couldn't breathe anymore. Why? Why did he inexplicably think of the word a death right at this moment? But, the a broken bar, s top, but Yan Ho and Cha He in jumped into the fray purely out of instinct and grabbed hold onto Jin Wu's right arm. The former was tightly hugging Jin Wu's shoulder as if he was trying to pull it down, while the latter was grabbing onto his wrist with everything she had. When Jin Wu looked back, Be Qian Ho hurriedly shook his head, even Cha He In was looking at him with anxious eyes, fear clearly visible on her face. A, a broken bar a broken bar. The desperate dissuasion of these two that didn't even care about their own safety helped Jin Wu to cool his agitation down somehow. Phew. Jin Wu let off a short sigh and released Go to Ryuji's wrist. The Japanese man rubbed his now freed wrist and retreated quickly. Meanwhile, the interpreter hurriedly arrived near his side. But Qian Ho quickly spoke to him. Let's stop the sparring session here, since the mood seems to have turned for the worse. Please tell the Japanese for us. The interpreter nodded his head. When Be Qian Ho's words were relayed to him, Go to Ryuji proceeded to glare at Jin Wu for a long time, before spinning on his heels to exit from the gymnasium without saying single a word. M. Mr. Goto. The voice of the interpreter as he ran after Goto Ryuji sounded so pitiful, but Qian Ho finally spat out a sigh of relief and lowered his head at Jin Wu. Forgive us for butting in. A broken bar. That man is supposed to lead the Japanese team in the operation a few days from now. I couldn't just stand by and watch. Even though there was a chance that something might go horribly wrong for us, but Yan Ho cautiously studied Jin Wu's expression and asked, Did I do something unnecessary? No, not at all. Jin Wu readily admitted to it, but Yan Ho was right. If something happened to go to Ryuji and that led to an unnecessary snag in the operation, then both countries might end up suffering severe consequences afterwards. So, he never thought of assigning any blame on Be Qian Ho or Cha He In after they interfered in the timely fashion. Wow a broken bar. Now that the situation seemed to have calmed down, people absorbed in spectating on the sparring session between Gota Ryuji and Jin Wu quickly approached him. The way they looked at him went through a noticeable change. The first one to make his approach was the master of the Shining Star Guild. The massive framed Ma Dong Wook. Tiu. Ma Dong Wook laughed genially. To be able to walk away with only a small scratch on your cheek after having a bout with the one and only Goto, you're truly something else, young man. Regretfully, no one else seemed to have figured out what happened here besides Cha He In and Be Qian Ho. Ooh, you have really firm muscles. What an outstanding physique. Ma Dong Wook touched Jin Wu's shoulders and arms while expressing his genuine admiration. My guild is full of mage type hunters, so we're severely lacking in melee types at the moment. Instructor Sung, if you haven't thought of a guild to join, how about joining mine? Excuse me, Ma, Instructor Nim? Having been quietly observing the situation from behind until then, Choi Jong In stepped forward and raised his voice. Yes, when Ma Dong Wook turned his head, Choi Jong In spoke up as if he was waiting for this moment. Hunter Sung Jin Wu is actually a mage type hunter. A massive earthquake erupted within Ma Dong Wook's eyes. What was that? On the other hand, a broken bar. Go to Ryuji escaped from the confines of the gymnasium and, after quickly distancing himself from the interpreter, he checked his wrist. A, a broken bar a broken bar. His wrist was bruised black and blue all over. Even though the weather wasn't all that hot, there were cold sweat drops visible on his forehead. He pulled out his phone and dialed a familiar number. After a couple of rings, he could hear the sound of the phone's receiver being picked up. Click. A, it's Matsumoto speaking. Association President. A, is it you? Goto, what's the matter with your voice? Goto Ryuji did his best to calm his trembling voice. In South Kaiwa broken bar, 
there's an incredible hunter in South Korea. A more than you, more than likely, sir. A, a broken bar. I think there's a need to modify our plan a little bit, sir. Matsumoto Shigeo didn't immediately say anything, but rummaged through something for a while instead, before finally asking a question. Ah the name of that hunter is? It's Sung Jin Woo. He's a reawakened evaluated as a rank S recently. Ah this is strange. Such a name doesn't exist. I beg your pardon? Such a name didn't exist. Did that mean the hunter goat to Rai Ujima just now was a phantom, an illusion? Well, he did kind of feel that he had been bewitched just now, though. However, didn't he also personally enter the Korean Association's website to confirm that that man was supposed to be a mage? What do you mean, sir? How can Sung Jin Woo not exist? A actually, we have received the final list of the Korean hunters participating in the operation not too long ago. Are you saying Sung Jin Woo isn't on the list? But, how could that be? Unless Ge Gun Hui had gone truly senile. There was just no way that he'd form a raiding party without the strongest member available. Matsumoto Shigeo spoke in a calm manner from across the phone line. Choi Jongyin, Ma Dong Wook, Beck Yun Ho, Cha Hyun, Im Tae Jio, and Minutes by Ung Yu. As if to signify that there was no need to modify their plan at all, Matsumoto Shigeo spoke in a voice filled with conviction. Are these six are the members of the Korean team that will leave for the raid in four days' time? Beck Ho took a deep breath, even after the two men who turned the inside of the gymnasium chaotic had left. His heartbeat didn't want to slow down at all. A was such a thing even possible? Having witnessed something that he'd been hypothesizing in his head for real, Beck Ho had difficulty trying to hide his astonishment. An awakened that can really grow stronger a broken bar. Just what would be that man's true value? He couldn't even dare to imagine it. This was his reason for standing back and watching on from the distance. The efforts of Choi Jong Yin, Ma Dong Wook, and Im Tae Jiu as they tried to scout in Wu. He remembered Choi Jong Yin's confused stare directed at him, as he didn't even bother to sweet talk the youth. If it was me, I'd probably never even think about joining a guild with an ability like that. Indeed, all the attempts to scout Hunter Sung Jin Woo were a waste of time. However, there were all sorts of ways to form a good relationship with a brilliant hunter that didn't involve scouting him. Time to activate the A Plan B, then. It was then, the broken bar. His mobile phone suddenly began vibrating. Seeing that the vibration didn't last for long. It must have been a text message. Without thinking too much, he pulled his phone out and took a look. It was an alert sent out by the association. And it was the final list of the participants for the ant subjugation raid taking place four days from now. Beck Yun Ho skipped past the lengthy list of the Japanese hunters and scanned the list of the Koreans, only for his eyes to widen in surprise. He shot up from his spot in the wooden bench. Hunter Sung Jin Woo isn't on the list. Chapter 113 The mass media was whipped into a frenzy. A to eradicate the monsters that turned the island of Jeju into a barren wasteland, the nations of South Korea and Japan form a united range team. Where would you find another story that could stimulate the interests of the country's citizens even more than this news? TV channels ran news segments related to this upcoming raid all day long while every front page of newspapers was completely dominated by the topics of the United Raid team. However, it was only Korea's media that kept talking about this matter. Even though the number of Japanese hunters participating in this operation exceeded the Koreans by three folds, no one thought it was strange that the Japanese media kept quiet over the upcoming event. And when a handful of articles did appear online, the comments that followed said articles were negative in nature. To say the least. A what did you expect when the Koreans are too weak to close a gate by themselves? A why are you cleaning up the SHT left behind by the Koreans? A, are they going to compensate us for the damages those ants caused here or not? A useless Japanese hunters association, and irresponsible Korean hunters, why don't you all kick the bucket together on Jeju Island? LOL. A Dong Sun Yi Mong. TL note at the end. While two parties thought of two different things regarding the same upcoming event, time continued to tick down towards the date of the operation. In the meantime, 
These past few days proved to be the happiest Jin Wu had been since his mother was admitted to the hospital. Many things went through a change. First thing first the Sung family returned to their home with their mom as soon as she was discharged from the hospital. Clank a broken bar. When he opened the front entrance, the first thing saw was the messy living room of the apartment, all thanks to Jin Ah being alone while he was kept busy inside the demon's castle. A broken bar. Jin Wu began pinching his sister's cheeks, and with gentle laughter, mom tried to stop him. The very first thing their mother had to do after returning home from four years of coma, was to clean the house. Jin Wu tried to dissuade her, but in the end, he couldn't win against her insistence. Eventually, the whole family rolled their sleeves up to clean up their home. Once the house was spotless, the complexions of all three brightened up considerably as well. The apartment that had always felt empty and lonely after mom's admittance to the hospital now seemed so full of life. For the first time in a long while, Jin Wu got to stretch his legs and go to bed without any worries in his mind. And on the next morning, when he got to the living room a broken bar, he got to truly appreciate the fact that his mother had returned when he saw the breakfast neatly arranged on the dining table. Park Jiang Hai stopped cutting the spring onions, turned her head towards Jin Wu, and asked, Did you sleep well, son? With still sleepy eyes, he replied as a smile bloomed on his face. A broken bar dot yes. Mum, the so-called expert continued to speak on the TV screen. The rate of evolution these ant monsters have shown is truly surprising to behold. A guest sitting next to the expert formed an exaggerated expression of surprise and asked, Monsters are evolving? Wasn't the ant found in Japan? A lone mutated creature? You're correct. When the mutated specimen increase in number and gain control of the whole horde, then we call that evolution. After that, the prepared video footage began playing. Ants, as they appeared during the first and second subjugation attempts, were displayed on the screen. At first, they were no different from regular ants, as they crawled on the ground. Just from their external appearances alone, they looked exactly like oversized supermassive ants. But then, a short while later a broken bar. This is the footage taken during the third subjugation attempt. The ant monsters were now walking on two legs like humans. The once giant heads had shrunken down in size by a great deal, they were able to move around much more nimbly, and the four limbs acted like arms. Its appearance looked as if half an ant and half a person had been mashed together to form a new creature. In only two years, the distinct characteristics of the ant species had been completely transformed into something else, and this footage of the ant monster was taken recently as it wreaked havoc in Japan. Wow a broken bar. The audience members in the studio all gasped out in shock at the footage being played. To their horror, the ant was now even closer in appearance to a human, and not only that, it even sported huge wings on its back. The comedian appearing in this show as a guest flinched in great surprise and raised his voice higher. That thing can now fly? That's correct, and that would be the decisive factor in the formation of the Korea Japan United Raid Team. At the Korea Japan United Raid Team. When that term came out of the TV's speakers, Jin Woo wordlessly switched the TV off. In all honesty, he also didn't want to miss out on this operation. His heart began racing so fast after he thought of all the experience points he'd get to earn when Association President Gagun Hui requested for his participation in the raid. However, his excitement cooled down in no time at all, and he was able to objectively and coldly analyze the situation. It hadn't even been one day since mom woke up. More than that, his mom didn't know that her son was a hunter yet. He also recalled the sight of his mother staying up all night for several months after she heard the news of his father going missing inside the gate all those years ago, too. He couldn't bring himself to tell mom that he was going to Jeju Island when she was already carrying around such a painful memory, to begin with. His lips didn't want to part and provide an answer. He wanted to spend some time with his family for a few days at the least. And he definitely didn't want to delay the moment he'd been fighting for so long for some other matter. A broken bar. I will a broken bar. Jin Wu barely made up his mind and spoke with great difficulty. A broken bar. Not take part in the operation. The one thing far more precious than experience points, 
the reason why he gritted his teeth and endured everything in order to become stronger. He did not regret making this choice, except that, now a broken bar, a BTW. Why is Sung Jin Woo not on the Korean list? A your disposition won't change just because you've become rank S, you know. Once a rank E, forever a rank E, dude. Prilly ran off to hide, nearly wetting his pants in the process. Gag. A 21 Jap rank S hunters plus even the retired hunter is gonna represent for Korea. Yay to broken bar. Where is Sung Jin Woo? A why does he want to do that when he's a rank S? It's so embarrassing. Except that, all these anonymous pointing fingers who didn't even know of his situation were really getting on his nerves now. Or, to be more specific, it was his sister's stress level that got on his nerves, actually. A I don't really give a DMN about what others think of me, and mom doesn't really go online, so it's fine on that front, but a broken bar. A broken bar dot but, Jinna liked to search for stuff like this in her spare time. A-T-S-K. Jin Woo clicked his tongue and put his phone down. There was no helping it, what with the poor timing and all. Mom had retired early for the day, and it was also still too early for Jinna to come back from her studies. He was thinking of taking a stroll to get some fresh air and change his spoiled mood, but like a devil. His phone began ringing just then. Jin Woo checked the caller ID and a grin formed on his face. Click. A hey, Hyung Nim. It's me, you Jin Ho. Hey, Jin Ho. Now that Jin Woo thought about it, was this kid still staying in that local motel even now? Where are you staying now? Is it the same motel? A oh, no, Hyung Nim. I started renting a room not too long ago. Thankfully, my mum came to my rescue a broken bar. Hearing his giggling voice, Jin Woo felt happy inwardly as well. Yu Jin Ho briefly updated Jin Woo regarding the status of his life, before hurriedly continuing on after remembering the reason for the call in the first place. AR, right. Hyung Nim, I found some office space for us, so would you like to come over and take a look? What office space was he even talking about? What office? When Jin Woo asked with a confused voice, Yu Jin Ho confidently declared, A of course, it's the office space for our guild, Hyung Nim. If you want to establish a guild, then you'll need an office, at the very least. A Yu Jin Ho, this kid a broken bar. It seemed more than likely that this kid was under the grand delusion of developing the guild he'd preside over as its vice master, and make it as big as the hunters or the white tiger in the near future. Jin Wu slowly scratched his chin. A if I tell him that the raid team will consist of only me and no one else, he might flip out in shock here broken bar. He only invited the kid to join him in passing, but now that it was time to explain to Yu Jin Ho the future of the guild, Jin Wu didn't even know how he should go about it. What do you think, Hyung Nim? Now that he was here, Jin Wu could understand why Yu Jin Ho sounded so confident on the phone. He scanned the empty office space and nodded his head. Its location was pretty good. I specifically chose a place not too far from your place. Hyung Nim. It was also tidy, too. I deliberately went for the newly developed office spaces. I believe that the old saying goes something like a put new wine in a new bottle. Don't you agree, Hyung Nim? Perhaps most importantly, the place was freaking huge. A, a broken bar a broken bar. I'll do my best to grow this guild so it'll surpass the five large guilds someday, Hyung Nim. Yu Jin Ho was burning with unbridled passion figuratively speaking. It's fine for you to burn with passion like that, but please, leave me out of it a broken bar. Jin Woo pondered seriously about this quandary, should he tell Yu Jin Ho to just go back to Yu Jin Guild now, before it's too late? Well, he had this gut feeling that the Yu Jin's chairman, a guy who even froze his own son's bank account, wouldn't be so keen on taking his son back at this point in time. Seeing that Jin Woo was in deep contemplation, Yu Jin Ho formed an expression that cried out Hok Hyung Nim a broken bar. You don't like this place? A broken bar dot dot no, that's not it. Then, should I sign the lease contract, Hyung Nim? A broken bar dot sure, why not? Judging from the size of the place, the monthly rental must have been crazy steep, but when comparing to the potential revenue stream of a guild, it'd be a chump change at the end of the day. I guess it'll be fine to let him dream a little bit longer. For now, 
Jin Wu couldn't tell the kid that it'd be only the two of them sharing this huge office space. Ah, Yu Jin Ho suddenly clapped his hands. By the way, Hyung Nim, who do you have in mind for the remaining spot? A broken bar dot. The remaining spot? Did he make a promise to open up a spot for someone? Since Jin Wu wasn't the type to forget his promises, he could only look at Yu Jin Ho with a confused expression, prompting the latter to excitedly explain the situation. You need at least three people when creating a guild, Hyung Nim, the master, the vice master, and an employee. Indeed, that was the minimum required composition of a guild's founding members. The rule of the minimum number for a team raiding the least dangerous gate out there, a rank E, being three people seem to be related to this, somehow. A eh well, you will never find a guild wanting to clear a rank E gate, thought U for broken bar. The founding members. Was it? Several familiar faces fleeted in and out of Jin Wu's head as he considered who could fill up the remaining vacant spot. The only condition being, they had to be hunters, too. If it was at all possible, someone who didn't want to work as a hunter ever again, and only there to make up the numbers. A eh, why do I keep picturing women's faces a broken bar? He recalled the faces of the high school girl who decided to give up being a hunter as well as a certain female healer who went back to her family home in the city of Pusan, but they disappeared from his thoughts quickly enough. It was then, ah, I almost forgot. Yu Jin Ho abruptly opened his mouth. Jin Wu quickly asked him, did you suddenly remember someone suitable for the spot, then? No, it's not that, Hyung Nim. Actually, there was someone looking for you. Me? Yes. Hyung Nim. Jin Wu couldn't help but get curious. Seeing that this unknown person had indirectly contacted him through Yu Jin Ho, he or she must have done their thorough research. A Yu Jin Ho and I aren't known as associates publicly, after all. Indeed, if anything, others should see their relationship simply as one being the previous raid leader while the other being the member of that raid team. A even then, calling me through Yu Jin Ho, is it? Jin Wu's eyes narrowed to a slit just a little. Who was it? I don't know, Hyung Nim. That person was definitely an English-speaking foreigner. Hold on. Yu Jin Ho rummaged through his pockets, pulled out his wallet and extracted a piece of a memo from there. This person said that he'd be staying in Korea until the 17th, so he'd very much appreciate it if you give him a call, Hyung Nim. Jin Woo took the memo and found a number for a mobile phone as well as a hotel room number. He took a look at the back of the memo but nothing was written there. 17th had broken bar that's three days from now. An English-speaking foreign array just who could it be? He couldn't think of anyone he knew or fit the bill. However, quite suddenly a broken bar. A broken bar dot looks like I'll have to go home first. Jin Wu's expression hardened. Pardon? You're going home already, Hyung Nim? Yu Jin Ho had been thinking of treating his Hyung Nim to a delicious meal since it had been a long time they ate together. But now... He looked like a person who had lost his country, perhaps a bit too callously, though. Jin Wu didn't even try to understand his Dong Sing's feelings at all. I'm going ahead first. Yu Jin Ho quickly hid his disappointed expression and quickly bent down in a polite bow, as usual. Okay, have a safe trip, Hyunga broken bar. Nim, when he raised his head. Jin Wu was already long gone. It was now that time in the day when the inky black darkness dwelt on the hidden alleyways. A female college student named An Jiminitz was on her way back home. Her heart was pounding like crazy at the moment. However, a eh, there's no way, right her broken bar, because, there was a man busy following her. She hoped that they were simply walking in the same direction, and that had to be the reason why his footsteps were continuing right behind her like that. A I saw something like this on a message board. In a situation like this one, it wasn't only the woman, but the man would be feeling rather troubled, as well. A man's walking speed should be faster or similar to that of a woman if he tried to walk past her, she'd freak out. But if he tried to simply stay behind her, then he'd come across even more suspicious, instead. On top of that, by going around the corner up ahead. She'd find herself in a secluded street with a broken street lamp, which could potentially make things even more awkward for the parties involved. Unjiminitz took a glance behind her. A man with a baseball cap pulled down low and his face staring at the ground was quietly walking on the street. Although it was suspicious, 
It was not a crime to wear baseball caps like that in public. A instead of letting this awkward walk together thing carry on, maybe I should have broken bar. And Jiminitz stopped walking as if she needed to tie her shoelaces, and eventually, the man walked right past her. You are broken bar. After confirming that the man was gone from her sight, and Jiminitz spat out a sigh of relief. She then gathered her hands in mock prayer and closed her eyes. A I'm really sorry about that, Mr. Unknown Uncle. She looked around her vicinity for a bit longer before tidying up her clothes. With a smile on her face, and Jiminitz energetically began walking again. She had a mountain of assignments to get through. If she were to prepare for the end of term exams, running back home now would still leave her with not enough time. A how wide was the scope again? Thinking about how she'd have to spend the whole night studying, her shoulders slumped dejectedly. But, as Aunt Jiminitz went around the corner, her eyes widened. You make a noise, I'll kill you. The man who walked right by her seconds ago was standing in the street corner with a kitchen knife and an insidious smile on his face. You know that a broken bar. A few people had died here already, right? A heartbroken bar. Aunt Jiminitz couldn't even scream. With a pale complexion, she stood there completely frozen. The man lowered the white surgical mask on his face and grinned. Follow me, Dick, take a broken bar. There was no one around them only the broken street light flickered listlessly. Chapter 114 Aha Broken Bar S someone, S save me a broken bar. And Jiminitz somehow managed to squeeze out her dried up voice and took a couple of steps back. No, that's what she tried to. However, her feet didn't want to move. It was as if heavy iron ingots were attached to her ankles. She could only stand the frozen as her tears began streaming down her face. Meanwhile, the man scanned his surroundings. Since the girl didn't look like she'd be able to move, he was thinking of offing her here, right now. How fortunate that there was nobody around. Also, there wouldn't be a CCTV camera of the Big Brother installed in a secluded alleyway like this one as well. A hey, that's why I love this neighborhood, you know. The man formed an evil grin and thrust the knife at on Jim and it says midriff. But then, a hand shot out from the darkness and grabbed the knife. Ah. Uh, the man raised his head, only to find a strange youth standing there. Because of his hood, only the punk's chin was visible. But he possessed a pretty DMN outstanding physique. A is he a broken bar wearing a glove or something? Not a drop of blood dripped down from the hand grasping the blade. Who the hell are you? The serial killer tried to yank the knife out several times, but after realizing that it wouldn't budge an inch, he quickly let go of the knife's grip and turned around. He rapidly escaped from the spot. What a strange son of a beach a broken bar. The serial killer took a look behind several times and found that strange youth was following along, constantly scanning the surroundings while he was at it. A what the hell is up with this beast a broken bar? The serial killer changed his direction and led the youth to a deserted vacant lot the place he originally wanted to drag that woman to. If that punk was protecting his hand with something, then it'd be fine to attack him elsewhere. When he arrived at the destination, the serial killer slowed down, and gradually shortened his distance to the strange punk that had been keeping pace with him until then. Once their gap closed to around a couple of feet or so broken bar. Hey punk. Who the hell do you think you are? The serial killer spun around and stabbed the youth in the chest with an all he'd been hiding under his jacket. Do I look like an easy mark to you, huh? Stab. The hand pushing the all into the youth's chest shook, hard. A, -a broken bar dot what the hell could be this hard? A stab proof vest? Or something else underneath his shirt? The serial killer quickly threw out a question. What the FCK? You wearing something under your clothes or something? If this guy was able to sense magical energy, then he wouldn't have asked such a stupid question. Too bad. The serial killer somehow failed to think of the word a hunter even though his opponent didn't try to retaliate after that second sneak attack. Instead, a quiet voice leaked out from under the hood. I'm curious about something. The voice naturally belonged to Jin Wu. He discarded the kitchen knife of the serial killer to the ground. Why are you doing this? What's the matter? You wish to reform me or something? Nope. Just curious if you have a reason or not. That's all. The serial killer snorted derisively. He thought that, what with this punk jumping out of nowhere to save that woman, 
and following him all the way out here. He was looking at some weirdo masquerading as an ally of justice or something. But now a broken bar. Ah this kid's just a bloody idiot, isn't he? Or maybe, this punk was the same type of madman as he was? The serial killer thought that maybe he could get away from here unscathed if he used his gift of gab, so he readily humored the youth. A reason, is it? Well, if I were to really think of a near broken bar because it's fun, fun, for some reason, whenever I see someone weaker than me, I just wanna torment that a broken bar, a broken bar dot person. The serial killer didn't get to finish what he wanted to say. Instead a broken bar, you whack, you whack. Instead, he fell to the ground clutching his left ankle where his tendon had been sliced apart. When he raised his head, he realized that Jin Wu was holding the kitchen knife even before he had the time to notice it. A hey, but, didn't he throw that away? Just win a broken bar. It was right then, Jin Wu's shape grew blurry again. You act. This time, it was his right ankle. The serial killer rolled around the ground in pain. Meanwhile, Jin Wu leisurely rummaged through the serial killer's pockets now that the murdering beastard wasn't going anywhere with his tendons cut in half. He soon found the killer's mobile phone and the wallet. You, you, who the hell are you, you son of a BTCH? Jin Wu ignored the venom spewing serial killer and calmly dialed 119 to call for an ambulance. He then pulled out the ID card from the wallet to take a look. Next. He placed the phone and the wallet back in the hands of the shivering serial killer and murmured quietly, Hand yourself over to the police before midnight tomorrow. What? A broken bar dot if you wish to keep breathing, that is. He said all he wanted to say. Jin Wu got up from the spot and inserted one of his shadow soldiers inside the serial killer's shadow, before leaving a similar sounding order to that soldier. A although, I don't know how patient a high orc's shadow can be. Butte a broken bar. That soldier might not be good with patiently waiting around until the designated time, but well, carrying out the next part of the order should be the speciality of high orcs. I'd prefer it if you keep living on. The killer had to be alive if he were to repent for his sins for the rest of his life. J just a broken bar what the hell are you? Jin Wu left the serial killer shivering from pain and fear behind in the vacant lot. He could hear the sirens of an ambulance coming from afar. He walked to a far enough location, and after confirming that there was no one nearby, he pulled his hood back, a broken bar dot few. Thanks to the signal sent by the shadow soldier after discovering the serial killer, Jin Wu was able to arrive just in time. The A shadow exchange. This skill was proving to be exceptionally convenient the more he used it. It's not the highest rank Trune Stone for nothing, is it? Jin Wu formed a satisfied smile now that he got to experience the greatness of the shadow exchange once more in the last couple of days. He couldn't even begin to imagine just how much more useful this skill would get. Once the skill level rose up high enough to sufficiently decrease the cooldown time. And so, as he continued to walk back home, a broken bar, M, he abruptly raised his head to see that the moon was now in the middle of the night sky. A now that I think about it, our broken bar, it's already tomorrow. The Korea Japan United Assault Team's raid, it was already here. He wasn't even on the team, yet his heart was pounding this much in anticipation. So, what would the participating members be feeling right now? Jin Wu recalled the faces of the raid members he was acquainted with, and prayed for their safety as well as their success in the mission. Late at night, Gota Ryuji was still in the dojo inside the Japanese Hunters Association. In front of him, two men, and at his back, one other. He was surrounded by rank S hunters, ostensibly the same rank as he was. Gota Ryuji took a deep breath. And just as his eyes flew open a broken bar, Daiha Art, the hunters biding their time powerfully pounced on him all at the same time. However a broken bar, slam. The ones to fall down were the three attacking hunters. That was great. As expected of Goto-san. No one can measure up to your skills. Sir, the three hunters lying on the wooden floor of the dojo dusted themselves off and stood back up. This was only possible because Gota Ryuji had held back his power. Without saying anything, he lowered his head slightly to imply that they all did a good job. A as expected, there's no problem with my physical condition. No, if he were to frankly assess himself, then he was at peak condition right now. Just from imagining how he'd swallow up South Korea. 
It felt like his condition was getting better and better all by itself. So, how come he a broken bar? Gota Ryuji continued to stare at the dojo, now empty that the three hunters had left, as the memories of that day still lingered on in his mind. Sung Jin Wu. Just what was he? A, a broken bar a broken bar. The more he thought back to that day, the more bitter he felt. Soon, though, Gota Ryuji shook his head. A well, it doesn't matter now. Regardless of all else, that man Sung Jin Wu wasn't taking part in this raid. And the association president's plan would unfold without any mishaps. Once South Korea loses almost all of her Ankes hunters, its leadership would naturally fall into Japanese hands. By then, the complaints of the Japanese citizens demanding for the appropriate reparations from the Koreans would have been transformed into rousing cheers of fanfare, instead. When that happened at a broken bar, a what can Sung Jin Woo do all by himself? Didn't matter whether Sung Jin Woo was a genuinely powerful hunter or he simply came across that way through Go to Ryuji's momentary delusion, the fact remained that, him not participating in tomorrow's raid was for the greater benefit of Japan. There was nothing to bother him now. The decisive moment would come tomorrow. Inside this still dojo bathed in the cold moonlight, Gota Ryuji formed a quiet smile to himself. We'll be in your care. The managing director of a certain TV station deeply bowed his head to the lone cameraman. Such a thing was completely unheard of. However, the cameraman standing in front of the director was no ordinary man. He was an active hunter and a proud holder of a rank A license. The future of my station depends on this raid. In order to win the exclusive broadcasting rights, the director had to spend over half of the station's total annual budget. There had been simply too many competing bids, and that's why he had to go all in. But, then again, there was a compelling reason why he simply had to make such a brave business decision. Not many rank cascades opened up around the world. Even when one did open. It was still impossible to take the recording equipment inside to capture the footage of what happened in there. In other words, this would be the one and only opportunity for regular citizens to witness an actual rank S raid in progress, as long as there wasn't another unfortunate event of a rank S gate opening up somewhere else, that was. On top of this, this broadcast wouldn't be a recording, but shown live. Sure, there would be a 10 minute delay to the live feed. But still, just how high would the audience rating reach? 70%? 80? When the managing director thought back to all the potential profit margin to be had from selling the footage to the TV networks in other countries, he no longer felt regret in investing half of the station's budget in this venture. A, -a broken bar dot as long as the ray doesn't end in failure. Indeed. No sane-minded viewer out there would ever want to watch the top-ranked hunters get devoured by the monsters during the raid. No, even if there were, he couldn't let such footage be broadcast to the public, to begin with. So, the director had staked everything he had on the success of the fourth subjugation operation. Considering that, bowing his head several times to the cameraman tasked with capturing the all-too-important footage was indeed, nothing. Heck. If the cameraman wished for it, the director was prepared to prostrate on the floor, even. Please don't worry too much, director. The cameraman did his best to calm the shivering managing director down from his high anxiety level. Even before he became a hunter, he made his living as a cameraman. And after agreeing to take on this job, he made sure to study and polish his skills of wielding the camera even further. Obviously. He didn't want to spoil the broadcast that the entire nation would be watching through some stupid mistake on his part. Of course, he'd get paid quite a big reward in return, too. A he's going to give me a portion of the profit earned from the broadcast, after all. The cameraman had already earned plenty from being a rank A hunter, but the offered amount was so high that it really excited him to no end. If the operation ends in success, then he'd be able to earn an enormous amount of money and fame, perhaps as much as the rank S hunters actually participating in the raid. Wouldn't he become quite possibly the most famous rank A hunter in South Korea? A smile formed on the cameraman's face, as all sorts of wonderful thoughts of the future bloomed in his head. By the way, I'm surprised that the association president Gagun Hyu actually gave his permission to film this raid. I mean, that hard-headed man wouldn't have allowed it simply for the sake of money, 
so broken bar. The station's director nodded his head at the cameraman's puzzled question. He said that the fee we paid will be split equally among all the hunters participating today, actually. Oh? In that case, why a broken bar? Why did he permit the filming of the raid? The director cautiously voiced his educated guess. I think a broken bar, I think. Perhaps he wishes to console the hearts of the citizens. The Korean Hunters Association had to swallow the bitter pill of defeat three times at the hands of the ant monsters. Because of the continuous failure, the association had to suffer great losses, which in turn also led to the loss of the public's trust. Meanwhile, the citizens felt increasingly powerless as the thought of these ant monsters being invincible took route in their hearts. As the atmosphere of the nation festered like that, a chance to reverse this whole thing had suddenly landed on their laps. You can tell how the public is responding by taking a quick look at the internet forums. The association president wanted to take a step further than that. He wanted to capture the moment of victory and broadcast it live to the citizens. His grim and perhaps desperate resolution to not fail could be gleamed from this decision. The cameraman nodded his head after hearing the managing director's explanation. He took a look at his wristwatch before before standing up with a determined expression on his face. It's time already. I'll be on my way now, sir. The managing director once more bowed deeply to the cameraman. We leave everything to you, Hunter Nim. Hunters began boarding the helicopter, as the spinning rotors issued deafening noises above their heads. A broken bar, a broken bar. The constantly smiling Ma Dong Wook, the always confident Choi Jong Yin and even Becky Yun Ho famed for his positive personality, were all wearing somber expressions. The cameraman checked his recording equipment for the last time. The camera itself was designed to be fitted around the head so it should not impinge on his movement by much. AI wouldn't have agreed to come if the camera was bulky and made it impossible to move. The place their helicopter was heading after was perhaps the most dangerous place in the whole of South Korea Anno, maybe even the world. Thinking about their destination, the cameraman could only swallow his saliva down in nervousness. No matter how hard he tried to stay calm, there was nothing he could do about the nervous tension slowly mushrooming in his heart. It was the same story for the rancorous hunters, as well. In order to dispel the tension in the air, Bekian Ho started talking to his Adong Sing, the one he was closest to. Hey! By Ungu, I really didn't expect you to show up here today. Minutes by Ungu grinned in response. I thought that, without me healing you, Hyung would be the first one to get killed today. I mean, you always jump on a monster whenever you see one, you know. What the hell? Why do you have talk like that? Since when did I ever ray jump on monsters? Other hunters began giggling after hearing the two men chat. Minutes by Ungu was the sole rank cat healer in South Korea. All members of the raid team were greatly relieved and happy to hear that he was coming out of retirement especially to participate in this operation. There was a big difference in whether there was a healer or not in a raid. After all, one would be able to fight harder without worrying about getting hurt when there was one. As the tense atmosphere frozen stiff in nervousness gradually relaxed through Becky Yun Ho and minutes by Ungu's conversation, Cha He in sitting next to the former quietly asked a question. Chairman Beck, by any chance, have you spoken to Mr. Sung Jin Woo before coming here today? Mr. Sung Jin Woo. Yes. Beck Yun Ho shook his head. No, I haven't. But, why do you ask? A heartbroken bar. It's nothing important, actually. I guess I've made a mistake. It was then. Ma Dong Wook broke out in genial laughter. Tiu Yu. Looks like it's finally starting. The gazes of the hunters present followed the direction he was pointing at. Through the window of the helicopter, they could see the darkened island that had become the land of monsters. Chapter 115 The mutated ants discovered the helicopter's presence in the air and began flying up one by one. Vu Yu and Ge Broken Bar. Vu Yu and Ge Broken Bar. Maybe the number of specimens that could fly was low, because the hunters could only see seven flying up to meet them. Let me take care of them. The soul mage type hunter among the team, Choi Jong Yin, stepped forward. His skill, a flame spear, was called into action. As soon as he was done casting his magic, Seven bodies of floating flames drew long lines in the air to resemble burning spears and slammed accurately into the airborne ants. Quack quack boom. It was difficult to kill a single ant monster with scattered firepower, 
but it was more than enough to burn away their wings. Kaiik Karah, with their wings burnt off, the ants fell freely back to the earth. Cho Yung in tightly clenched his fist while witnessing the result of his hard work. However, now wasn't the time to bask in the glow of his victory. Choi Jung in turned around and asked Ma Dong Wook, What's happening with the Japanese side? The ants had noticed their approach and began moving now, meaning, there was no more time for them to take it easy. Crackle. Ma Dong Wook paid attention to the radio receiver stuck in his ear. As a tanker, he was named as the leader of the Korean side of the Ray team. They say they have landed on the island now a broken bar. Kaboom. Just as he was done speaking up, there was a loud explosion from afar. Boom. Kaboom. As if that was the signal, several more explosion began ringing up from all parts of the island as thick, choking smoke plumes rose up. The fourth subjugation operation was now officially underway. The master the Reapers Guild, in Tejayo looked out of the helicopter's window, and at the ground far below, a deep frown forming on his forehead. Thousands of ants were pouring out of the ant tunnel, before splitting up into four smaller swarms to rush towards the four cardinal directions. That's some creepy and disgusting thing to look at. Seriously, man, doesn't it look like most of them have left the tunnel now? A broken bar dot it does, doesn't it? The once lengthy lines of ants soon came to an end leaving behind a massive gaping hole in the ground. That was the entrance to the ant tunnel. The scale of the ant tunnel must have been rather incredible, because the entrance itself was as big as the mouth of a tunnel one would see commonly on the national highway. And in the deepest past of the ant tunnel, the ant queen was waiting for their arrival. This range team only had one ego late to eliminate the ant queen. Everyone, before they set off to invade the ant tunnel, Ma Dong Wook gestured and gathered the raid team members around him. He even gestured towards the hesitant cameraman, too. Everyone participating in this operation pressed their heads together. During hundreds of simulation runs, Japanese were only able to buy us one hour, tops. Which means, we need to kill the Ant Queen within that hour, no matter what. He didn't bother to speak about the possibility of a if we fail. Unlike the first three subjugation raids, there was no escape path this time around for them, they would be utterly cut off inside the ant tunnel. Ma Dong Wook studied the faces of each raid members, and they returned a nod, a look of grim determination clearly etched on each one. Ah these are the best individual team members imaginable. Unless there was another tragedy similar to Jeju Island happening in the future, one would never come across an opportunity to hunt together with members this capable ever again. Ma Dong Wook was deeply honored to be the leader of this team. They soon finished reconfirming their resolve, and then a broken bar. Let's go. From the helicopter, seven people, the six members of the raid team and the lone cameraman, jumped out. How long has it been since the Koreans went inside? Go to Rai Uji threw out a question. Hold on. Now originally, it was Go to Rai Uji's job to communicate with the mission control center. But as he didn't enjoy carrying around bothersome things. Another hunter was tasked with doing so. It was precisely this person that provided the answer. They say it has been less than 10 minutes. 10 minutes, is it a broken bar? Time to start the escape procedure, then. Before they started withdrawing from Jeju Island, though, Go to Rai Uji briefly scanned his vicinity. The corpses of the massacred ants were piled up on high. The role of the Japanese in this raid, on the surface, of course, was to attract the attention of the ants. They didn't even focus on killing the ants and concentrated on retreating in order to buy as much time as possible, yet they still managed to achieve such a feat. Ah the Koreans might find these ants as tough opponents, but they are nothing to us, the Japanese. The unbridled confidence caused the corner of Gota Ryuji's lips to arc up. He kicked away an ant corpse hampering his steps to a far away distance and immediately issued the order to withdraw. Finally, it was time for them to start moving towards the true goal of the Japanese team. However a broken bar. Excuse me, Goto-san. The hunter in charge of the communication formed a worried expression. I can't get in touch with Team 3 from a while ago. Is it equipment malfunction a broken bar? The instances of equipment that had gone through multiple meticulous checks, malfunctioning right before an important part of the mission, or during the important part itself, did happen occasionally. 
The landing point of Team 3 was in the southern part of the island. Gota Ryuji's Team 1 landed on the western part and they had been constantly moving south, so their distance shouldn't be that great. What is the estimated distance between our current position and the last known position of Team 3 before the communication failure? With our current speed, we should be able to get there within 10 minutes. As expected, it wasn't far. At this rate, Team 3 would never get to hear the order to withdraw and get left behind in the island, eventually meeting a very bad end for themselves. A, a broken bar A broken bar when he thought about the next subjugation operation that would take place involving only the Japanese personnel, he simply couldn't afford to have five rank S hunters as Kias. Also, because Team 3 was planned to be deployed on the southern part of the island, which was the closest to the ant tunnel, the whole team was made up of the best of the best among Japan's elite. Losing them here meant that Japan would greatly suffer as well. A well. I'm sure nothing bad has happened over the broken bar. Indeed, it must have been a minor error. Nothing to worry about. After a short deliberation, Gota Ryuji decided on the next course of action. We shall head over there and take a look. The moment Jin Wu stopped his usual daily run, the familiar mechanical beep rang out in his ear. Tearing. Total distance ran, 10 kilometers. You've completed running. 10 kilometers. Completely the opposite to when he started doing the daily quests. Jin Wu wasn't even out of breath. He had repeated these daily quests for so long, it simply felt like the part of his daily routine now. Soon, along with the completion message, his rewards figuratively landed on his lap. I stats. Out of the three stat bonus points he gained as a reward, Jin Wu spent two on his agility, while the remaining point was spent on his strength. Stats, Strength, 219, Endurance, 200, Agility, 230, Intelligence, 250, Perception, 200, Available Points to Distribute, 0, Reduction in the Physical Damage, 46%. Seeing that almost all of his stats were now ending with a 0, a satisfied smile crept up on his face. A if only I had one more point a broken bar, although it was regretful. He couldn't manufacture a point out of thin air, so there was no helping it. Still, looking at his stat value that had risen up evenly like this, a smile automatically bloomed on his lips. A nice. After he raised intelligence stat to 250, he began maintaining a balance or sorts and made sure that not one stat was left behind. All five stats are indispensable to me. That was his final assessment after leveling up and raising his stats for a long time. Regardless of which stat it was, with their numerical values continuing to soar higher, he hadn't been disappointed once so far by their usefulness. A that's why a broken bar. He was planning to continue with this stat balancing act for the foreseeable future. Ray as long as there weren't any unexpected circumstances forcing him to change. Of course, Jin Wu dismissed the stat window with a satisfied grin still etched on his face. He then took a look around him. His neighborhood had always been on the quieter side, but today, he failed to spot a single soul so far. He could easily guess the reason why. Though Jin Wu pulled his phone out and confirmed the current time. A I knew it. The Korea Japan United team's raid would be in full swing by now. And pretty much every single citizen should be glued to their TV screens, too. Jin Wu turned around. His daily quest was already over, but the steps leading him back home were far more urgent than usual. The operation was unfolding smoothly so far. Just as the Japanese had predicted. Ma Dong Wook's team didn't encounter any obstructions as they entered the deeper parts of the ant tunnel. The inside of the tunnel resembled the cave type dungeons in its layout. However, if there was one clear difference to note, then that would be the lack of illuminating stones. The hunters had to provide light themselves to see where they were going. A, a broken bar, a broken bar, gulp. The cameraman thought that he had plenty of experience exploring dungeons before, but today, he just had to nervously swallow his saliva. His current position was right at the back of the group. The team maintained a formation of Choi Jong in standing right at the front to light their way using magic, while the other hunters were sticking very close to him. The cameraman also had a flashlight attached to his headgear for the purpose of filming. Unfortunately, 
This darkness was infused with a heavy amount of magical energy. The flashlight didn't provide as much help as the magic from a rank S mage, and it could just barely illuminate a bit of space in front of his eyes. It's really quiet in here. Choi Jong invoiced his opinion without giving it too much thought, and Ma Dong Wook next to him nodded his head to express his agreement. As a leader and a tanker, he was duty bound to protect the mage, Choi Jong In who should originally be stationed at the far back. Was that the reason why? Ma Dong Wook continued to glare at the surroundings with a pair of sharp, focused eyes. His usual, outgoing demeanor was nowhere to be seen now. It was the same story with Baek Yun Ho, as well. He activated the AIs of the beast even before entering the ant tunnel. He hadn't spoken a single word and did his absolute hardest to latch onto any slight movement or deviation in the flow of the magic energy. Both minutes by Ungu and the cameraman also carried deeply tense expressions. Only Cha He In maintained that expressionless face of hers, silently walking forward while her hand rested on the hilt of her sword. It was then, look, over the air broken bar. He must have found something in the distance, because Choi Jong In raised his voice. A broken bar, huh? ma broken bar. The hunters all gasped out in nasty shock. Countless ant eggs were attached to the walls and the ceiling of this huge chamber with nary an empty space between them. They could see dark colored lava wiggling inside the semi-transparent shell of each egg. There could only ever be one emotion they felt when facing this nursery area filled with gloomy, dreary atmosphere and seriously terrible stench. That would be a sheer disgust. Don't you think we should just burn all these away? Choi Jong In spoke his expression crumpling greatly. For the first time since he entered this ant tunnel, Ma Dong Wook formed a smile. I'd like nothing more than to do exactly that, but since we don't have much time, let us not. Even if all of these creatures hatched, they would only live for no more than one year, at most. As long as they could kill the mother, they didn't have to worry about these critters anymore. A broken bar dot here they come. Baek Yun Ho pointed towards the distant darkness and warned the rest of the team. Even before he made his warning, though, Cha He In had unsheathed her sword already. Ma Dong Wook pulled the shield as large as his body right up to his chin and glared at his front. Sha 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 broken bar. A group of Arantan ants appeared at the same time, as if they were born on Jeju Island and had gone through some sort of a mutation. All of them didn't have eyes. Are they the Queen's guards? Asked Ma Dong Wook. Choi Jong In shook his head. No, they are not. Looks like they are here to guard the nursery area. In that case, this shouldn't be difficult. If they were regular monsters, not the guards of the boss creature, then there was just no way these critters could withstand the combined firepower of a raid team consisting entirely of rank S hunters. Knowing better than anyone else that there wasn't a lot of time. Ma Dong Wook jumped into the fray first. Let's go. Hunters followed after him. Right behind them, flames flared out brightly from Choi Jong In's hands, and arrows fired by Im Tae Jiu sliced up the air as they flew to their targets. Just as Ma Dong Wu predicted, the battle was concluded pretty quickly. Kaik, the head of the last ant fell to the ground. Cha He In wordlessly shook off the bodily fluids clinging onto her sword. Meanwhile, Ma Dong Wook spoke up. Since the nursery area is right here, that means a broken bar. Choi Jong In provided the follow up. A broken bar. The Queen's lair is nearby. As the hunters began checking their equipment before they rushed into the decisive showdown against the Ant Queen, the cameraman began looking here and there to capture more footage. But then, he gasped out in pure shock. Hock. The gazes of the hunters were immediately focused on him. I am really sorry. Momentarily forgetting that the camera attached to his head was actually broadcasting to the rest of the nation, the cameraman hurriedly bowed towards the hunters. Sensing something was afoot, Baek Yun Ho approached the cameraman. Did you find something? Ah, well, it's just that a broken bar. Over there, the cameraman sheepishly smiled and pointed to the corner of the chamber. There's a pile of empty eggshells over there, but like, one of them happens to be really, really big, you see. A dot a broken bar, Baek Yun Ho's eyes grew larger. It was as the cameraman said. Most of the eggs containing regular ants were only about the size of a bicycle wheel, yet the one pointed out was as big as a grown mana broken bar. Ah no. 
weight. The lengthy and ovoid shape of the egg was large enough to say that a fully grown ant specimen must have emerged from it. A that's also an ant egg? A broken bar. Just what the hell came out of that egg? Minutes by Ungu had walked closer before anyone had noticed it. There was a look of huge shock on his face as well. Beck Yun Ho's expression was stiff for a brief moment, but he quickly changed it to a grin as he lightly slapped Minutes by Ungu's back. We're here to kill the queen. Let's not worry about anything else. A broken bar. Dot dot right. Minutes my Ungu carried an uneasy expression as he turned around to walk over to where the rest of the hunters were. Before he joined the others, Beck Yun Ho took one last look at that egg. A that's just crazy a broken bar. A this is just crazy a broken bar. Go to right Uji had to doubt whether his own eyes were working properly or not. Hock, my broken bar. Other Japanese hunters either convulsed in shock or muttered lowly under their breaths. Go to right Uji frowned deeply as he scanned his surroundings. The hunters of Team 3 were found in the exact location where their communication had been cut off. All five of them were here but without their heads. The sight of their headless colleagues lying on the ground as corpses left a shocking mental imprint on the other hunters. A, a broken bar a broken bar. Go to Rai Uji wordlessly massaged his temples, before approaching the bodies to check out their wounds. Ah this wasn't done by a blade. The necks of the dead hunters were all roughly bitten off. A just how much of a biting force was it for their necks to end up like this? While Go to Rai Uji was stewing in his astonishment. One of his fellow hunters walked in closer and angrily spat out. How dare these DMN ants a broken bar. Goto quickly shook his head. It's not a ants. Pardon? Whether this was the handiwork of an ant or not, there was only one enemy. B but, how can that be? Goto Rai Uji swallowed his saliva. No matter how hard he searched, he couldn't see any hint of a battle taking place here. If ants pushed on with sheer numbers to annihilate Team 3, then he should have found corpses of dead ants or some other traces around this area. However, he couldn't find anything. Also, the wounds on the dead hunters a judging from the location of the attack, it was more than likely that they were killed by a single assailant. A how could a team of the best hunters from Japan fall to a single monster a broken bar? If his guess was correct, then only a rank S dungeon's boss could do something like this. Go to Rai Uji quickly snatched the communication device from the hunter next to him and spoke up. It's Goto. A yes, please speak. Where is the ant queen? Did it come out of the tunnel? A let me confirm. The magic energy detection camera mounted on the spy satellite. Only America? Japan and China possessed such technology in the entire world. In reality, China had to hack the Americans to copy the camera system, so one could argue that only the USA and Japan truly possessed this technology. The location of the Ant Queen, as monitored by the technology Japan so proudly boasted to the rest of the world, soon came out of the receiver. Ah no, Goto-san. The Queen is still inside its chamber. Ah. The Korean hunters are entering the Queen's chamber as we speak. What was that? Go to Rai Uji stood right up. He felt his heart nearly leap out of his mouth just then. Ah the Queen didn't do this? His breathing quickened. He realized that something was going terribly wrong here. Go to Rai Uji hurriedly issued a new order. Issue the withdraw isle a broken bar. Tell every single Japanese hunter to escape from this island immediately. A eh, yes, sir. Understood. Chapter 116 Go to Rai Uji ended the communication there, his expression remaining quite grim. A did we miss something? In order to successfully achieve what they were aiming for, the Japanese considered all types of possibilities and variables. However, the event of a team featuring five of the very best Japanese hunters getting annihilated in one go like this say such a thing simply exceeded all their expectations. A way to my new to broken bar. Something popped into his memory just then. There was an odd occurrence about four months ago. The Ant Queen, being observed for 24 hours straight every single day, suddenly showed a massive decline in its magical energy emission. It was less than half of the usual amount. The research team interpreted that as the lifespan of the Queen coming to an end and submitted several hopelessly optimistic reports. That was only until the Ant Queen began slowly recovering her magic energy. Of course, it took about a month, 
didn't it? It didn't take too long for the queen to regain its original magic energy output. All those researchers that spoke up about the lifespan or other had to shut their mouths as this result obviously went against their expectations. Goto-san. The voice of one of the team members woke Goto Ryuji up from his reminiscence. A broken bardon. He had been kneeling on one knee in order to check the bodies of Team 3's dead hunters. He slowly stood back up. Now wasn't the time to worry about anything else. A did we come in far too deep inland a broken bar? Shashashashak a broken bar. Hundreds of ants had appeared behind him by then and these monsters raised their heads up as if they were smacking their lips in anticipation of a tasty meal. On the other hand a broken bar. The Korean team had entered the boss room, also known as the Queen's Chamber. It took them 15 minutes to get here. A if we consider the fact that we'll need roughly the same amount of time to get out of here broken bar. They still had around 30 minutes of wiggle room, assuming that they should be able to shorten their return trip because they were already familiar with the path now, the remaining time was on the A more than enough side. A very good. Having confirmed the time with his wristwatch, Ma Dong Wook raised his head. Everything was going according to plan. What remained now was how should they go about bookending this operation. But Kian Ho used his AIs of the beast to see through the darkness and accurately assessed the number of enemies present. The queen is at the rearmost location. There are eight guards in front of the target. The queen's guards were incomparably stronger than the regular ants. It'd be too tough for one tanker to take on the attacks of the queen and its guard monsters. From here onwards, Ma Dong Wook needed another person to act as a secondary tanker. He looked to his side. Hunter Cha. Yes. Can you take on the guard duty while I tend to the queen? Leave it to me. Cha Hien's reply was short and simple. She served as the main tanker during the raids of her guild, the Hunters. So, performing the role of a sub-tanker was easier than drinking cold soup for her. Ma Dong Wook shifted his gaze to the rest of the team. Every single member present here was a top specialist in hunting down monsters. Going through detailed explanations was a waste of time for them. Let's go. As soon as Ma Dong Wook turned towards the ants, Choi Jong In created a massive ball of light and floated it up to the highest point in the boss room. That brightly illuminated the entirety of the chamber. Hock. The cameraman spat out a quiet gasp at the sheer size of the light sphere. He quickly began whispering towards a small mick located near his lips. As a rank A hunter, I've participated in quite a few raids before. But it's my first time seeing such a huge a light magic like that. As expected of Korea's best mage type hunter. His voice entered the mic and got transmitted to the viewers throughout the entire country. Not too long ago, he heard that the live broadcast he was filming had shot past the audience rating of 80%. Feeling overly motivated now, the cameraman tried to step forward in order to capture even better footage. But then... Minutes by Ungu standing next to him at the back of the group hurriedly yanked him back by his shoulder. Cock. At this absolute strength, the cameraman couldn't offer any resistance and spun around to face Minutes by Ungu. His shoulder hurt so much that his mouth bobbed up and down all by itself. A how can a healer be this strong a broken bar? There was no time to get shocked, though. The cameraman was now facing minutes by Ungu who carried a completely different expression to when he was busy cracking jokes during the ride in the helicopter. This here is a boss room of a rank S dungeon. No one here is responsible for your life, except yourself. Hearing minutes by Ungu's anger-infused voice, the cameraman could only continue to nod his head, unable to form an intelligible reply. If you understand. Then stay at the back. The real thing is about to get started. The overflowing energy of a rank S hunter or even a healer, who was supposed to be the physically weakest out of all the hunter types, still could display an aura that easily overwhelmed a rank A hunter. That was the difference between a rank S and a rank A. Such monstrous beings were uniting together to start an intense battle. So what could a measly little rank A cameraman even achieve here? The cameraman felt his own powerlessness for the first time since becoming a hunter, and hurriedly stood behind minutes by Ungu, Shorin or Ufo broken bar. Here they come. A supergiant ant discovered the hunter's presence and shifted its six legs to slowly approach where they were. So, that's the queen a broken bar. But Kian Ho nervously swallowed his saliva. The taut, 
nervous tension was also writ large on the faces of other hunters. The absolutely commanding presence of the Ant Queen. These men and women had become the very first humans to witness the outer appearance of the Ant Queen, having sneaked past the wall of hundreds, thousands of ants to get here. A today, we shall end the lifeline of these denable ants for good. But Yun Ho's heart trembled as he thought about bringing that massive creature down. But, if they were to do that, then first of all a broken bar, but Yun Ho's glare that had been fixed on the Ant Queen now shifted lower to the ground, a we need to broken bar, eight ants walking in front of the Ant Queen a they had to get rid of the guards first, ha huh? up, as if he had read the minds of his fellow raid members, the main tanker of the team, Ma Dong Wook, rushed forward to the front line, a thick vein protruded out of his neck as he shouted out, UDMN ants, come and get some. His impressive roar. The ants' sights had degenerated now, but in return, their sense of hearing had become even more developed, so they immediately bared their fangs and claws before pouncing on Ma Dong Wook's position. He quickly looked behind him. Hunter Cha. Now, Cha He In had been running behind Ma Dong Wook while maintaining a certain distance, and when she heard his call, quickly unsheathed her longsword. Grabbing the hilt in a reverse grip with both hands, she powerfully stabbed the ground, skill, a tremor of provocation they activated, quack, with the sword stabbing the ground serving as the epicenter, magic energy radiated out in circular waves, the ant guards aiming at Ma Dong Wook suddenly all changed their directions and jumped at Cha He In instead, as if they had been entranced by something powerful. A the you go. Ma Dong Wook inwardly fist pumped the air as the monsters ran past him and towards Cha Hien. She was successful in attracting the aggro of the ant guards. Next up, it was his turn. Ma Dong Wook quickly stepped in between Cha Hien and the giant ant queen trying to shuffle towards her. You're mine. The ant queen must have been displeased by an enemy blocking its way, because it began bellowing out a high pitched scream. Ki I E E. Any old tanker would have been suppressed by the sheer pressure and cover their ears from that horrifying screech, but such a trick wouldn't work against Korea's best tanker, Ma Dong Wook. Hap, he instead activated his skill, a battle cry of provocation. Unlike Cha Hien, who activated an O-Agro skill, Ma Dong Wook activated one that only worked against a single target. The Ant Queen stopped screeching out and glared at Ma Dong Wook now. He had successfully attracted its aggro. A yes. And now, his role was to endure boss's attacks until his colleagues managed to kill off the Ant Guards and come to his aid, and that would be the role he felt most confident of performing in this world. Ma Dong Wook lifted up that heavy, large shield right up below his chin the light of grim determination burning in his eyes, as he always had done, he began praying deep in his heart, a please grant me the power to protect myself and my colleagues today, quack a boom, just then, a huge explosion resounded out from behind him, signaling the beginning of the raid of the ant queen, where countless lives were at stake, grandpa, aren't you going to watch, hunters are supposed to show up on screen today, grandma, I don't care. Don't be like that now a broken bar. The folks in TV said just now that they can really smash apart those ants today this time, so let's watch together. Arg. They all say the exact same thing all the bloody time. I told you, I don't care. Eth micro eth squared eth eth tm section eth register eth tm eth tm tm dot eth apostrophe eth sedilla eth tm sense. An old grandpa turned away on his chair and concentrated on the newspaper, instead. But then, a sound of him clicking his tongue came out from his slightly hunched back. TSK, TSK, TSK. Even this newspaper is talking about those DMN hunters and nothing else. How boring. The old grandma cautiously closed shut the door to their bedroom as the grouchy voice of her husband continued to enter her ears. You are broken bar. Only until two years ago, her husband used to hold so much interest towards all the news related to Jeju Island. He was also a big supporter of hunters, too. Their one and only child was taken from them by the ants of Jeju Island. After all, the despair that felt like their world was collapsing on them soon became deep hatred towards the ant monsters. Her husband donated a sizable amount of money to the Hunters Association whenever there was a subjugation operation taking place to cheer on the participating hunters. 
he failed to fall asleep because of nervousness on the nights leading up to the operation dates, too. However, the bigger the one's expectation, the greater the one's disappointment would be. When the third subjugation attempt, where the hunters promised to spare no effort to succeed, also ended up in failure with heavy losses incurred, her husband couldn't regain his wits for several days, looking all dazed and the like. After that, her husband stopped talking about hunters altogether. He stopped expecting, and stopped hoping for a miracle from them. You are broken bar. The grandma sighed out once more and picked up the remote of the TV in the living room. When it was switched on, the host of the broadcast was in the middle of making his emotional speech. AR proud hunters of South Korea have taken their very first step towards the Ant Queen raid. The hunters were getting ready to engage in combat just as she turned the TV on. The grandma gathered her hands in front of her chest and continued to watch on, her heart beating faster and faster in anxiety. When the hunters were injured, she averted her gaze while feeling sorry for them. When the attacks of the hunters landed successfully, she clapped her hands in delight. I go, I go, A R R. Finally, they have brought down a monster. That was the beginning. The terrifying looking ant monsters began falling one by one from the fierce attacks of the hunters, and whenever that happened, the roars and cheers of people shook and reverberated throughout the apartment building the grandma lived in. I go, I go, a only four. There are only four more left. They have managed to defeat half of their numbers. Hearing that announcement, tears suddenly formed in the grandma's eyes. First of all, she was thankful towards these hunters who were risking their lives to protect other people. Secondly, she recalled the face of her son as the boy celebrated him getting hired by a large corporation located in Jeju Island. A only two more guards remain, as long as they can defeat these two, they can start concentrating on the Ant Queen. It's not too long now from the successful completion of this raid. It was then, slam. The bedroom's door flew open and the grandpa hurriedly ran out, his face burning with emotions. Dear a broken bar, even though grandma called out to him. Grandpa didn't say anything, his reddened eyes glued to the TV screen and nowhere else. His tightly clenched fists were trembling hard now. The host held his breath and continued to observe the situation for a while, before a broken bar. A they have defeated all of those powerful ant guards. The only remaining ant is the queen itself. As soon as they kill the queen, it'll be the same as the ants being completely decimated. Our proud hunters. They are not wasting any time and have begun attacking their final target. The TV screen now displayed the stirring image of five hunters rushing in at the same time from behind Ma Dong Wook, who had endured commendably well against the Ant Queen's attacks. Thick tears streamed down Grandpa's face as he energetically punched the air almost out of instinct. You are uh, inside the TV station. As the phone calls of encouragements and support inundated the station's phone line. The station's director yelled out in pure, unadulterated joy. Sir, the audience rating has gone past 85% just now. We did it. The director tightly clenched both of his fists. The audience rating of 85%. Now that was a record that would never be beaten, even if the South Korean football team reached the final of the World Cup. And when he thought about all the profit coming from overseas, as well as the potential future of New Year Broken Bar, a jackpot. He plopped down on his chair and rubbed his face. All the other employees within the station's A situation room all breathed sighs of relief after seeing the happy face of their boss. On the main screen showing the transmitted footage from the island, the Korean hunters were busy making mincemeat out of the Ant Queen. At the USA, China, Russia, and France. This is the moment that South Korea will join the list of countries that have successfully cleared a rank S gate. The station's director took out his handkerchief to pat down his sweat-soaked slick forehead. A eh, yes, very good, very good. The queen was on the brink of death now all these hunters had to do now was to finish off the ant monster and safely escape from the ant tunnel. However a broken bar. Kayak. What the hell? The director was jolted out of his senses and he quickly took a look behind him. One of the producers hurriedly lowered the volume. The director tilted his head this way and that, before walking closer to where this producer was. Producer Nah? What was that noise just now? Ah. 
that it was a broken bar. This is the real-time live feed coming from Jeju Island. Actually, that screech came from the Ant Queen. The Ant Queen made that noise? There was a slight delay between the broadcast being shown to the public and that of the real-time live feed coming in from the island. Since no one knew what would happen during the raid itself, it was decided that the real-time footage couldn't be shown to the public directly. The station's director stared at the feed, before issuing an order with a smile on his face. Well, I think it won't do for a monster's terrible screech to come out when we're about to witness a historic victory. How about you edit that part out, or decrease the audio volume? Will do, sir. This producer named Dana nodded his head, and the director squeezed his right shoulder as a gesture of encouragement. It was then one of the station S employee hurriedly ran up to him with a hardened expression. Director. Produce an R. The director quickly turned his head round. According to his personal experience, not once did the reports made by his subordinates carrying such expressions turn out to be a good one. Even before the director heard the report, he was beset with this rather ominous hunch. Praying that he was wrong, at least for today, the director cautiously asked the employee, A broken bar dot what happened? Unfortunately, One's ominous hunches had a way of coming true. The employee spoke in a disconcerted voice. Sir, I just found out that Japanese hunters are withdrawing from the island right now. What was that? Ma Dong Wook spurred his teammates on. We're almost there. Let us just push a little bit harder, everyone. Just as his words implied, the Ant Queen was truly on its last legs. All they needed was a little more push and that would be it. There were hundreds of arrows stuck tightly together on the head of the queen fired by M. Tejio, and the creature resembled a hedgehog as a result. Pio U. Kwaji Eek. Yet another arrow flew and struck the queen in the face. The creature screeched out as if it was in great pain and shook its head. Ki Eek. The queen quickly recovered its bearings and began spewing out poisonous acidic liquid throughout the boss room. Splash. It was such a wide-scale attack that several hunters failed to escape in time. Their skins began burning up into black charcoal but their wounds were restored in full by minutes by Ungu's healing magic. Kai -e Eek. The queen was further enraged by the fact that its acid attack wasn't effective, and bit down on Ma Dong Wu in front of the group with its large, saw-like fangs. Quack. However, Ma Dong Wook activated the advanced fortification skill to defend his entire body and managed to endure the queen's attack. One side of the ant's jaw was blocked off by the shield, while the other side, with his left hand. While Ma Dong Wook was buying more time in this fashion, a huge pillar of flames exploded out from the side of the Ant Queen. Quack a ka boom. It was Choi Jong In's magic doing its thing. Kike. The Queen staggered and failed to balance itself. But Hyun Ho in his beast type monster form, meanwhile, seized upon this chance and jumped up very quickly to rip out the Queen's left fang with his bare hand. Poor. Quay Jeek. Deftly landing back on the ground. But Yun Ho breathed heavily as certainty grew larger in his heart. Are the queens finished? His extensive hunting experience told him so. This would be the moment when they finally kill the leader of an army of monsters that dyed this land black with the blood of their victims. Just a little bit more, and it'd be done. When he thought like that, a certain powerful emotion welled up from deep inside his heart. But then, the queen suddenly raised its head high up in the air and a broken bar, Kai -e a screech that was so loud that it almost ruptured the hunter's eardrums, reverberated throughout the entire ant tunnel, but Hyun Ho's A's shook hard, A what was that? A roar of anger? It's death throes? No, it felt different from those. That screech sounded like a pleading call towards someone, something, which was still far away. A it's calling for something? When his thought process reached the he felt an unexplainable chill run down his spine. We need to stop that thing. Before Beck Yun Ho could take another step forward, Cha Hien jumped up rather gracefully and swung down the sword she held firmly with both hands. Slice. The queen's head fell down to the ground first before she could land back on her feet. Thud. The cameraman had been holding his breath as he bore witness to this battle of the rankest creatures. And finally, he was able to raise both of his arms up high in elation as tears formed in his eyes. This was the moment when the curtains closed on the horrifying battle that lasted for four years. Pant, 
plant a broken bar. The heavily panting Ma Dong Wook raised his thumb up towards his teammates. Cha He In also sighed out in relief. Choi Jong In grinned as he adjusted his glasses, while Im Tae Jio punched the air. Everyone was expressing their delight over the victory in their own way. Only Baek Yun Ho among them was shuddering from this ominous and unexplainable chill taking route within the corner of his heart. Hyung. We just became the seventh range team in the entire world to successfully clear a rank S gate, so why do you look like a broken bar? Hold on. It was then, Ma Dong Wook, who had been in communication with the command center, suddenly formed an enraged expression. There was no time for them to relax like this. He quickly called out to his teammates taking a short break nearby. The Japanese have withdrawn already and the remaining ants are heading this way. We need to escape from here, right now. What? But, don't we still have some time left? Twenty rank S hunters couldn't even hold out for thirty minutes, never mind one hour. When his teammates grew visibly flustered, Ma Dong Wook spoke in a complicated voice. I don't know the details, but a broken bar. The association is trying to find out what's going on. But the Japanese have one-sidedly cut off the communication. Those stinking sons of beaches a broken bar. Choi Jong-in spat out some choice words in disgust. If it were the Japanese hunters down here and not the Koreans, would they have given up this early and withdraw? No matter what, though A1 had to be alive first in order to get angry later. To prevent unrest from breaking out among his teammates, Ma Dong-wook did his best to suppress his own feelings. With a calm face. He hurried with their escape from this place. Everyone, hurry. The members of the Korean raid team hurriedly ran towards the exit of the Queen's chamber. However, the one running in the lead, Baek Yun Ho, stopped in his tracks first. Aha broken bar. Hyung. Minutes by Ung Gun running right behind had to stop there, and as a chain reaction, everyone else came to a stop as well. Wordlessly rooted to the spot. Baek Yun Ho's gaze was fixed in one direction as his entire body began trembling noticeably. This, this can't be broken bar. This couldn't be happening. No, such a thing shouldn't even happen in the first place. As he watched a shadow approach them, he recalled the tall, humanoid shaped eggshell back in the nursery area. A these are broken bar you're telling me that this is the power possessed by a single monster? Baek Yun Ho's complexion paled instantly. Other hunters feeling puzzled finally sensed something was wrong and quickly took a step back from the exit. What's this? Did the ants return here already? As the hunters began falling into a confused state a broken bar. From the far side of the ant tunnel draped in darkness, a single winged ant was slowly walking towards the Korean hunters. Chapter 117 Cha He In immediately felt something was very wrong as soon as she saw the ant monster leisurely entering the queen's chamber. A Thraser broken bar no presence. It was almost impossible to locate the creature without keeping her eyes locked on it constantly that's how difficult it was to sense its presence. There were only two beings out of all the hunters and the monsters she met until now that had this sort of effect on Cha Hien. One of them was this ant monster right in front of her eyes, and the other one was a broken bar. A, a broken bar. Mr. Sung Jin Woo. She inexplicably recalled Sung Jin Woo, who had finally bared his hidden fangs at Japan's most powerful hunter a couple of days ago. Eth apostrophe eth apostrophe s eth apostrophe f eth apostrophe eth tms eth tm eth tm tm dot eth negation eth tm currency eth tm sense. What if that man stood in front of her as her enemy? Shudder. She couldn't breathe any more as a crippling chill ran down her spine. A a broken bar. Just imagining it alone caused her expression to harden considerably. The entrance of this unknown ant monster was definitely not good news for the Korean hunters, who were still deeply fatigued from fighting the ant queen. That thing a broken bar. Something's wrong with that monster. It feels really creepy. It wasn't to the extent of Baek Yun Ho or Cha Hien. But other hunters also felt a certain sense of incongruence here. Gulp. It was just a single monster, yet the atmosphere was shifting rather rapidly. A what should we do? Ma Dong Wook was inwardly worried. When faced with an unexpected situation, a leader had to make a quick decision. Especially so, when they were pressed for time like this. A it's a monster, so we should just kill it. But a broken bar. But, just why was he feeling this enormous sense of unease right now? While they stood there pondering and hesitating, 
The ant monster narrowed the distance between them quite quickly. Its movements were so eerily quiet that goosebumps automatically rose up on their skins. A we don't have the time to hesitate like this. By the time Ma Dong Wook finally managed to suppress the warning bells rung by his instincts and made the next logical decision a broken bar, a broken bar. The monster suddenly disappeared from his view. Where? Ma Dong Wook's eyes opened super wide as he hurriedly scanned his vicinity. The reactions of other hunters weren't all that different, either. Behind a broken bar, the cameraman anxiously looking around belatedly located the monster and shouted out, It's behind us. The hunters were startled by this and quickly turned around. With the speed none of them could see, the ant monster had slipped past the hunters to stand before the dead corpse of the ant queen. It went past us, a eh, but, how a broken bar? Just like that. The hunters of the Korean raid team finally got to see what Baek Yun Ho saw earlier with his A eyes of the beast. Thump, thump, thump. Their heart rate rapidly picked up and their breathing quickened in no time. A A broken bar dot that's no ordinary monster. Cold sweat drops dribbled down Ma Dong Wook's forehead. The ant monster quietly stared at the dead queen, not even showing a hint of interest towards the hunters. But then, it raised its head and a broken bar. Ki -e 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 -e. A broken bar. It began screeching out a beastly howl so terrifying and loud that the entire ant tunnel began shaking from the reverberation. Plop. The cameraman was the first to lose all his strength in his legs. Plop. Plop. The other hunters couldn't withstand the sheer pressure as well and they began kneeling on the ground one by one. Ma Dong Wook too carried a look of pure disbelief as he tried to support himself off the ground. A e a broken bar I'm kneeling because of a howl? A e a broken bar. By the time the seemingly never-ending howl came to an end, the only one standing still was Cha He In and no one else. However, her two legs were wobbling noticeably too, as if standing upright was all she could do at the moment. Obviously, fighting back was out of the question here. Only then did the ant monster display some interest towards the hunters, with a clear hostile intent, to boot. A, -a broken bar, Cha -he In's eyes grew wider, the creature's face was hideously twisted as it turned around to face the hunters, as if it was expressing its anger at the death of the queen. She did her best to calmly move her hand towards the hilt of her sword. However, the ant monster was a step faster than the speed of Chahi in drawing her sword from her waist. Bishuk, the ant monster literally blinked and reappeared right in front of her nose. Chahi in's eyes shook hard. She didn't even have enough time to think about defending herself. Slam. Arc. Being struck in the side of her head, Chahi in flew away in a straight line and slammed into a far wall, before powerlessly falling to the ground. Tumbly broken bar. Just one hit and Cha -he In was rendered unconscious. All of her teammates couldn't hide their astonishment after seeing that horrible spectacle. Because he broken bar their strongest member had been knocked down in one hit, that was why. Unfortunately, they didn't have any time to stay shocked like that. They had confirmed the ridiculous power level of their new enemy. Through their experiences, these hunters knew very well that their odds of survival would decline further the longer they remained hesitant as they were now. As the main tanker, Ma Dong Wook took a step forward first. Hup. Ma Dong Wook powerfully bear hugged the ant monster from behind and strengthened both his arms. With a strength that could easily uproot a full grown tree, he squeezed hard at the ant monster's body. Thick veins popped up all over his arms and his neck. Unfortunately, a broken bar. Yuak. When the ant monster increased its strength for a bit, both of Ma Dong Wook's arms fell off. Just like that, he fell down to his knees. No, Baek Yun Ho pounced forward. If he failed to draw that thing's attention away now, then Ma Dong Wook would be killed off in an instant now that he lacked the means to defend himself. Baek Yun Ho gritted his teeth. White fur began sprouting up all over his body, his claws extended, and he transformed into a ferocious beast, before pouncing on the monster. Bishuk, the monster disappeared from the spot again. A were broken bar. Even Baek Yun Ho's A eyes of the beast failed to follow the monster's movements. The scream came from his behind. Yua. This time, it was Choi Jong Yin, who was getting ready to cast his magic. The ant monster's long claw left a lengthy, diagonal cut wound on his upper torso, and he fell to the ground with a pained moan. About five paces from where he was, 
Im Tae had been waiting for an opening while hiding his presence. He immediately fired an arrow containing his magic energy. A I'll never miss in this distance. His strong self-belief was contained within that shot. Swish. Too bad for him. Grab. A powerful tremor rocked Im Tae eyes. A hawk. The ant monster snatched the flying arrow and easily snapped it in half. Crack. Im Tae hurriedly tried to knock his next arrow, but by the time he did so and raised his bow, the monster was already standing in front of him. A broken bar. F C K Pow. Im Tae was struck in the face and flew away. But Kian Ho attacked when the ant monster's back was turned away from him, but the back of his head was grabbed by the monster instead, as the creature spun around in an instant. He was planted violently into the ground next. Boom. But Kian Ho's body quivered from the impact. Just as the ant monster was getting ready to slam Baekhyun Ho to the ground again, Ma Dong Wook dashed forward and shoulder charged the creature away. Kwan. The ant monster rolled on the ground for a little while, before standing back up. Ma Dong Wook's arms had been severed for sure only a moment ago, yet he was attacking the creature with all his limbs completely intact. The ant monster defeated Ma Dong Wook again, and then, proceeded to defeat other hunters again, too. Yet, the humans that should have stayed down with crippling injuries were attacking again, all fully healed in the blink of an eye. Only then did the ant monster begin to recognize the existence of a healer. The monster scanned the vicinity to find this annoying human. However, minutes by Ungu stayed calm under the pressure. His lone self-defense skill, a camouflage. He was able to completely hide himself with the skill that was quite similar to the A stealth skill, but there was a drawback to it, he couldn't move from the spot. Even then, that was more than enough for a healer like him. He simply had to stand still in one spot and continued to heal his teammates, that was all. When the healing skill continued to fly in from an unknown place, the ant monster changed its tactic. It selected Ma Dong Wook who looked the sturdiest among the hunters grabbed his leg, and dangled him upside down in the air. A what is that thing trying to do now? Minutes by Ungu was taken aback with great surprise. The ant monster then proceeded to slowly destroy Ma Dong Wook. Minutes by Ungu carried on healing him as that happened. He had no choice there. The moment he stopped healing Ma Dong Wook, that man would be dead in less than a blink. After all, sweat poured out in buckets as minutes by Ungu continued on with the healing magic. The ant monster traced the continuously firing healing magic's origin, and then, its head swiveled in minutes by Ungu's direction. It can't be. His heart skipped a beat he blinked, and the ant monster was gone from the spot. A what the hell? Where did it disappear to this time? By Ungu. But Yun Ho loudly yelled out. It happened then, stab, cock, blood sprayed out of minutes by Ungu, the pain of being burnt alive came from below, and he took a look down to see a huge hole in his stomach, and the ant monster's black arm emerging out of that hole, he raised his head in disbelief and the met Baekhyun Ho's gaze, minutes by Ungu spoke in a faltering voice, hi Ungu broken bar, run, B by Ungu, Baekhyun Ho tried to get up, but he couldn't put any strength to his wounded leg, Quajik. The ant monster tore into minutes by Ungu's head. Quajik, Quajik. You are a uh, Ho staggered unsteadily and ran forward. The ant monster discarded the now headless body of minutes by Ungu and grabbed Bekyun Ho by his neck. He struggled with all his might, but it was still insufficient to escape from the creature's incredible grip. Suddenly, the ant monster opened its mouth. Hyunga broken bar, run a broken bar, Hyunga broken bar, run a broken bar, a broken bar, Baekhyun Ho was freaked out of his skull, his brows shooting up real high in shock and terror. The ant monster was perfectly mimicking the speech pattern of minutes by Ungu. If one subtracted the off-putting crack in its voice, one might even mistake it as minutes by Ungu's, even run a broken bar, Hyung. The ant monster repeated the same words for a long time before looking straight into Baekhyun Ho's eyes. You are a broken bar. Weak. From the mouth of the ant monster, a familiar language flowed out. It sounded inarticulate, but for sure, it was still undeniably Korean. What the a broken bar? Baekhyun Ho's eyes widened even further. This side a broken bar queen, dead a broken bar, killing soldiers a broken bar. Not enough payment a broken bar your king. 
who, a broken Bardot king. The ant monster strengthened its grip on Becky Ho's neck. Cock, your king a broken bar where? Becky Yun Ho's brain kicked into gear. With the strongest person in the Korean team, Cha Hyun, still unconscious, he needed to find someone who could buy him and the rest of the group a little bit of time. And he immediately thought of the Japanese team that had abandoned the Koreans. More specifically, the strongest among the Japanese, go to Ryuji. Out her broken bar out said ear broken bar. Out said ear broken bar. The ant monster raised its head up, it seemed to be searching for something, before speaking again in a satisfied tone of voice. A broken bar a broken bar, a strong one. And then, it discarded Becky Ho as if he was not even worth wasting time on, and disappeared from his sight in a scarcely believable speed. Cock. Cock, Beck Yun Ho lay on the ground and panted out heavily. He quickly took a look around him. This wasn't the time for this. Before that thing comes back, they needed to get out of here. However a broken bar, sha 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 broken bar. While they were engaged in the battle against that ridiculously overpowered monster, the swarm of ants had returned to the ant tunnel and were slowly encroaching upon the queen's chamber now. A broken bar. Go to Ryuji sheathed his sword back in the scabbard. Corpses of ants were piled up like small hills all around him. At a quick glance, there must have been over a hundred of these creatures. It was a perfect demonstration of the abilities possessed by Japan's strongest. Looks like we've taken care of most of them. Yes, sir. His teammates nodded their heads while admiring the sight of the always trustworthy Go to Ryuji. They thought that. As long as they stuck by his side, they at least would avoid the fate of getting killed off. Sir, I've been told that we'll be the last to withdraw. The hunt receiving the transmission from the operations center relayed the message. Go to Ryuji nodded his head and turned in the direction of the coast. This way our broken bar. Go to Ryuji didn't get to finish his sentence. Swish. Because an ant monster suddenly appeared out of nowhere and was now standing before his group. That's why. A, a broken bar a broken bar. With a single glance, go to Ryuji figured out the capabilities of the new enemy. A that isn't a normal ant at all. Go to San. His colleagues tried to step forward to help him, but he held them back. I'll handle this. Against an opponent this strong, his colleagues would only prove to be a hindrance. Instead, going at it solo would be simpler for him. Trusting his judgment. The teammates heeded his order and retreated to a distance while leaving everything on his shoulders. Go to Ryuji unsheathed his sword with a circumspect look on his face. An ant a broken bar. You seem to possess a pretty strong aura. Perhaps the ant monster had also sensed his power, because it wasn't budging an inch from the spot. But, that was to be expected eh? if that creature displayed even a hint of movement. Go to Ryuji was planning to slice it up into hundreds of fine little pieces. It was then, the ant monster opened its mouth. You area broken by the king? King? Goto's eyes opened wider. An ant just spoke a human language. However, it was already a well-known fact that intelligent monsters conversed in their own languages. So, it wouldn't be a stretch of his imagination to think that a monster would succeed in imitating humans' languages. A smirk formed on Goto Ryuji's face. A king. Is it a broken bar? When Association President Matsumoto Shigeo finishes building his empire of hunters, then indeed, he was the one and only viable candidate to assume the throne. Wasn't he? That's right. I'm the king. Kekek. As soon as the desired answer came out of his mouth, the ant monster fully unleashed its magic energy. Quah. Like failing to realize how big an iceberg was from seeing only its tip. Go to Ryuji misjudge the true power of the enemy from the small portion of its magic energy that leaked out. His eyes imperceptibly trembled. Ah this, what is these a broken bar? The bone chilling cold air woke goosebumps up on his skin, and all the hair on the back of his neck stood right up. He had experienced a sensation like this only once before. A, a broken bar a broken bar dot dot sung jin woo. Slice. Almost at the same time as the ant monster made its move. Go to Ryuji's head fell to the ground. You are ah. The Korean team was currently surrounded by the swarm of ants. Ma Dong Wook fought and Taejiu fought Choi Jong in also fought, and even the cameraman had to kill the ants. However, there was seemingly no end to the waves upon waves of ants. Pant, pant, 
plant a broken bar. All sounds had stopped and all Beck Yun Ho could hear was his own heavy breathing. A is this the end? He quickly wiped the blood trickling down below his eyebrow with the back of his hand. With their lone healer type hunter gone, they had no avenue to deal with these many monsters now. This resistance was a futile one, indeed. Even then, he couldn't bring himself to give up A because, two of his most precious friends had lost their lives in this DMN place. He definitely didn't want to dig his grave where they were buried, too. You were. He destroyed the head of yet another ant. However, countless more replaced the dead one and tried to pounce on him. Kai Ichk, Kai Ichk. But Yun Ho powerfully shook off the ants and stood with his back against a wall. Like this, he at least wouldn't get surrounded from all sides now. Pant. Panta broken bar. He raised his head and searched for other hunters. His colleagues, who had been fighting alongside him only a moment ago, could no longer be seen, their figures completely buried within the swarm of ants. No way. He wanted to believe that it wasn't possibly broken bar. He bit his lower lip, but then, was jolted out of his senses with a sudden presence appearing behind his back. He spun around rapidly and threw a punch but stopped before he reached his target. Because he broken bar the one standing behind him wasn't an ant. A what a broken bar. Who is this? It was, in fact, a soldier decked out in black full body armor. This was his first time seeing one, but then again, he heard plenty of times before about this a thing from Park Hyujin who had been involved with the Red Gate incident. Isn't these a broken bar? Beck Yun Ho cried out in surprise. Why is this thing here? It was then. From the soldier, a familiar voice came out. A exchange, chapter 118 One year before the Korea-Japan United Raid team came knocking on the Ellender Broken Bar, the Ant Queen began thinking. A A we must leave this island. Other life forms that should have served as their food source had all disappeared from the island and the incidents of its children devouring each other occurred frequently now. There was no source of food on this island to sustain the citizens of the Quendom now that its population had swelled up to several thousand strong. A. A. This cannot continue. Abandon the existing nation and seek out a fertile land overflowing with other life forms to establish a new one. A. If the domination of the island was the queen's first task, then this problem would be its second one. However, the queen remembered. It remembered all the powerful invaders that stepped on the island several times before. The queen's forces managed to repel them, but the nation had to suffer great losses as well. Far too many of the queen's children had to be sacrificed. Would its children be able to defeat those beings if they went to another land? AA needs stronger soldiers. It needed a single most powerful soldier to lead the citizens of the nation. And so, the queen decided upon the direction of their evolution. Half a year later, by gathering the magic power it already possessed, as well as all the nutrients it had amply absorbed before, the queen gave birth to a brand new life. It was the greatest combat weapon imaginable, born solely for the sake of dealing with the strong humans. The queen's determination to create the most powerful soldier there was, combined with the original order of killing all humans it heard in its head created a horrifying monster that simply exceeded all common sense. The monster was born with the skill, a gluttony. By consuming its opponents, this new monster could turn their magic energy as well as a portion of their knowledge into its own. AA I want to become stronger. The monster realized what its powers were early on and began devouring its own kin, but the queen left it alone. What this monster wanted was the same as the queen's desire. After all, the queen was greatly happy as Ahi grew stronger and stronger day by day. It was happy because Ahi had already exceeded the power of Ahi's mother now. And without encountering a single hitch, the army Ahi would lead was getting closer to completion as well. That was why Ahi just a little more time here broken bar. In the midst of that a broken bar, the human invaders entered this land once more. Their numbers were lower this time but they were far stronger than before. However, the queen laughed at them. In preparation of the ants waging war against humanity in another land, this should serve as a great opportunity to test out the powers of Ahim. The queen, as usual, sent out all of the soldiers guarding its castle along with Ahim. Just as the queen desired so, Ahi went out and completed the first mission Ahi was given. But when Ahi returned, 
the queen was already dead, a he was enraged, and thankfully, there were enough strong humans left on this island that would serve as the outlet for Ahi's rage. First of all, the king of the humans was killed, and then, it systematically annihilated all the subordinates next to the dead king. One of the subordinates cried out before he got killed off. He asked just what the hell a he was. After devouring humans through the skill a gluttony, a he now possessed the ability to reason. A he then began thinking to itself. A what a broken bar am I? Up until that point, a he was a soldier of the queen. But now, with the queen's death at the hands of the humans, what should a he call itself now? A sole existence that must lead the remaining soldiers of the quendom. A he only knew one word to denote such an existence. A a broken bar dot king. A he had killed off the enemy king already so a he had definitely satisfied the requirement to become one now. Grab, the ant king bit onto the head of the remaining human. But, the a broken bar. Suddenly, the ant king's head swiveled in the direction of the ant castle. There was an enormous aura rushing out like a fierce storm from where the queen used to live. That level of power couldn't have come from a common foot soldier. A a broken bar dot dot a king. Immediately sensing that an enemy that could threaten itself had appeared. The Ant King slowly rose up towards the Ant Castle. Just what kind of a calamity was this? The TV station's situation room used to be enveloped in a celebratory mood, but now, everything felt somber and dreary like a funeral. The A live broadcast showing up on the viewers' TVs suddenly got cut off with the entrance of a strange, winged ant monster. Understandably, they began flooding the station with phone calls of angry complaints and urgent inquiries. Ring a broken bar, ring a broken bar. One of the employees walked over to the station's director and cautiously made his report. Sir, our communication network is about to collapse from all the calls made by the irate viewers. The station's director raised his head. So what? Are you suggesting that we should broadcast live the scenes of our hunters getting ripped to shreds by a single ant monster? Eh no, sir. The broadcast got cut off just as the hunters were getting one-sidedly beaten up by that mysterious ant monster. It was understandable that the curiosity of the viewers would skyrocket. However, that didn't mean they could broadcast the scenes of Hunter Ma Dong Wook getting tortured, nor the moment that Hunter Minutes by Ungu got devoured. The director buried his face in his hands and let out a helpless moan. It's over a broken bar. It's all over. The once-in-a-lifetime gamble where the fate of his station rode on, was now going down the drain because of one DMN and monster. It's over a broken bar. Heavy, grim silence filled up the situation room. No one person was brave or dumb enough to open their mouths now. Except for one, that was. Huh? The producer staring at the real-time feed with an ashen complexion suddenly opened his mouth. D director, a broken bar dot what now? Someone just appeared in the location out of nowhere. The director didn't bother to raise his head up and grimly replied. Unless it's Jesus himself, don't report to me every little thing that happens over there. Got that? However a broken bar, a broken bar dot it's all over. Realizing that talking wouldn't get him anywhere. The producer increased the previously lowered volume up way higher. Kai eek, Kai eek. The situation room was immediately filled up with the screams of the ant monsters. The director quickly raised his head up out of sheer shock. It wasn't just him, either. Everyone present within the situation room all rushed to the live feed monitor, and soon, sounds of oh, oh came out amongst those watching the screen. A broken bar. The director sitting there in a daze finally managed to lift his butt off the chair. When he came in closer, the employees stepped aside to let him through. The screen of the live feed monitor was reflected in the director's eyes. Oh, dear lord a broken bar. Jesus holy Christ. The director suddenly began calling out to Jesus, which he didn't even believe in, to begin with, and hurriedly shouted out to the rest of the employees. What the hell are you all doing here? Why aren't getting ready to start broadcasting this? Are you going to take responsibility if we lose out on the current audience rating? The producer hurriedly tried to dissuade his director who didn't even bother to hide his boiling excitement. But, sir, if we start broadcasting again, we'll be showing the live feed, instead. There won't be any delay in the transmission, and everything will be shown in real time. 
Sir, we won't be able to do anything if another emergency situation breaks out. The delayed transmission time of 10 minutes between the feed and the broadcast had run out by now, which left the director with the decision of going with either the real-time feed or end the broadcast altogether right here. A broken bar dot it's all or nothing. Pardon me? We've already stopped broadcasting midway, anyway. Things won't get any worse than it already has. Well a broken bar. I, I guess so broken bar. A hunter's sudden appearance was caught on the camera. No one could tell whether he was a Korean or a Japanese. Heck, it was unknown if he was a hunter at all. But with his appearance, the director's gamble that seemed to be over for good suddenly gained one last shot at the glory. The director issued a new order with a determined expression firmly etched on his face. Switch it on. Switch it on. Now. He then pulled a chair closer to the producer and settled down there. Our station's fate rides on that man. You got that? You. Even though he was being pushed into the figurative cliff. The cameraman didn't regret anything. Anyone would have dreamed at least once of doing something like this when they were young. A broken bar to become a hero. If that was impossible, then at least, to become a support to the true hero. During the time he did menial jobs for the TV station and earned his experience that way, he never imagined that he'd be blessed with an opportunity to do so in his lifetime. But then, he awakened into the rank A hunter and by earning experience fitting for his rank, he was able to get to this point in his life. Thanks to that, he got to clearly capture the scene of hunters proudly representing South Korea successfully raid the boss of a rank S gate. A I'm the one who caught that on film. Yes, me. And with the footage he captured, many people would come to know the valiant sacrifices these rank S hunters made for the purpose of the extermination of the ant monsters. That was more than enough for him. He felt like that all of his efforts spent in studying filming techniques and working as a hunter was finally being paid off here. But, if there was one thing he was a bit regretful about, then that would be broken bar. A da da broken bar. His father, who looked after the cameraman all alone after they lost his mother to cancer. Thinking that he'd not get to see his fur there again, he felt a deep pain in his heart. Quay jeek. His shoulder was bitten, yet he couldn't feel a thing. His arm had stopped moving a long time ago. He was originally a tanker, so he was able to endure somehow, but this really was his limit. Plop. He knelt down on the ground. Even then, his head was filled with the thoughts of his father. A why did my last conversation with dad have to be me asking him if he had his breakfast? If he knew this would happen, he might have talked for a lot longer. A on that day, when dad came for a visit to Seoul, I should have cleared up all of my sedulously broken bar. However, time was a ruthless, unrelenting beastard and regret always arrived one step too late. The cameraman raised his head. The horrifying fangs of the ant monster were nearing his head. He no longer had any magic energy left to activate the A-fortification skill, so he wouldn't be able to defend against the monster's attacks now. Tears formed on the edges of his eyes. A hey, dad, I'm sorry. It was then, Quay Jeek, accompanying the noise of the outer shell being crushed. The bodily fluid of an ant got splashed on the cameraman's face. A broken bar dot huh? A blade emitting a cold, silvery gleam had cleanly stabbed through the ant's head. The cameraman raised his head and followed the blade, only to find another A ant with a long red-colored A plumage stuck to the top of its head standing there. A why is an ant attacking another ant? No, the thing wasn't an ant. The cameraman was mistaken because both were of the same black color. What he saw was an unknown A soldier decked out in black armor from head to toe pulling his sword out from the head of the dead ant. Plop. The ant monster with a hole in its head powerlessly sagged to the ground. Just what on earth I saw broken bar. When the black A soldier stepped aside, a youthful man with a somewhat familiar face approached the cameraman and shouted at him. Open your mouth. Pardon me? This man didn't even give the confused cameraman a chance to start a conversation he simply grabbed the injured man's chin and poured down an unknown liquid down the throat. Cock cock. The cameraman nearly coughed his lungs out, but he still managed to swallow all of the liquid. He covered his mouth and asked, Who? Who the hell are you? However, the youthful man didn't even bother to respond and simply turned around to face the ants. A.W. What the heck? The cameraman was flustered greatly, but still, 
he stood back up. A, a broken bar dot wait a DMN second here. His legs were moving again. But, was that all? He belatedly realized it, but his arm was also fine after drinking that strange liquid. A what happened here? What's going on? Did that man do something to him just now? He couldn't come up with any other logical explanation besides that one. It was then, quite out of the blue. The cameraman finally remembered where he saw that youthful man's face. A could he be that guy? Jin Wu calmly scanned his surroundings. A, a broken bar a broken bar. Last time he got to meet the members of the Korean raid team in the association's gymnasium, he had inserted one of the shadow soldiers in Baek Yun Ho's shadow, just in case. What a relief it was that he did that. It seemed that what he'd been watching wasn't a live broadcast. As the situation here was far worse than the stuff shown on the TV screen before it got cut off, he managed to save the weakest of the lot, the cameraman, first, but the other Ankhas hunters were still surrounded by countless ant monsters. A what should I do now? The quickest way to deal with this situation would be to summon fangs out and sweep these pesky ants away in one go with his trademark pillar of flames. But, if Jin Wu did that, he couldn't guarantee the safety of the rank S hunters. So, he needed another solution here. Jin Wu quickly made his decision and turned his head towards Ian. Ian. Ian tapped his chest in a manly manner as if to say, leave it to me. He then strode forward, his large frame shaking to and fro, before opening his shoulders wide to roar out at the top of his lungs. New tearing. Ian has activated a skill, roar of provocation. The effect of that was rather amazing. The ants attacking the hunters all snapped their heads towards Ian's direction simultaneously, and soon, they all rushed over. Nice work. Jin Wu lightly tapped Ian on his back and summoned the two shore swords he got as rewards after killing the Demon King. Ah the Demon King's shore sword. The pair of shore swords with a blue tinge to their blades gleamed threateningly under the light magic's glare. Kiiiiik. Kaichk. When hundreds of ant monsters screeched out and pounced at the same time, his entire view was dyed jet black in an instant. Jin Wu began gripping the hilts of the shore swords even harder. And then, he vanished from view. Kaichk. Soon, ants collided with the soldiers in a bloody battle to the finish. In the meantime, Baek Yun Ho, whose status was still better than everyone else, managed to move the injured hunters to a safe corner. Thankfully. They were all still alive. The cameraman joined soon afterwards, and helped Baek Yun Ho out. Because Jin Wu, or more specifically, Jin Wu's summoned creature, attracted the aggro of all the ants present here. He was able to safely finish this task. Pant, pant, pant a broken bar. Ma Dong Wook was leaning against the wall, his breathing rough and irregular. He then grabbed the arm of Baek Yun Ho, who brought him here and asked, W what's going on? Who's fighting? Ma Dong Wook's eyes were unfocused. His eyes were injured and he couldn't see properly. Baek Yun Ho placed his hand on Ma Dong Wook's hand. Instructor Ma. It's fine now. Everything will be fine. A broken bar. He then shifted his gaze over to Jin Wu. Other people may not have known it yet, but Baek Yun Ho had a rough idea already on how powerful Sung Jin Wu was in reality. Baek Yun Ho might have been greatly flustered when the black soldier suddenly vanished, only to be replaced by the youth, but he still ended up shouting out loud even before he consciously realized it. He said, A please, help us. And then, after seeing the youth move towards the ants along with his summoned black soldiers, the sense of relief washed over Baek Yun Ho so much so that he nearly plopped down to the ground. Sure in or oof or broken bar, Sung Jin Wu proceeded to massacre and annihilate the ants that gave him and his teammates so much trouble at a frightening pace, as if those creatures were nothing but broken toys to be played around with. Kai e eek, screams of dying ants exploded out from everywhere and nearly made Baek Yun Ho dizzy in the head, but, he still sighed out in relief. A it'll be fine now. He wasn't saying that to Ma Dong Wook. No, he was telling that to himself. The hope of survival was rekindled in his heart. The aid from one Sung Jin Wu was far more reliable and trustworthy than the 20 plus rank S Japanese hunters combined. A, a broken bar dot looks like there's no need for me to step up here. 
Ba Qian Ho formed a smile and sat down next to Ma Dong Wook. All he could do now was to sit down quietly like this and watch Hunter Sung Jin Woo do his thing. He then drew the cameraman's attention towards Jin Woo. You should keep the camera pointing at him, because you're going to witness something amazing pretty soon. The incident of the Red Gate and the incident during the raid of the Hunter's Guild. This was Ba Kyun Ho's chance to personally witness the spectacle he had been hearing about all this time. Why yes, the cameraman did his best to maintain his distance so he wouldn't get in the way and tried to capture Jin Woo's actions with his camera. The work of the raid team's hunters may have been finished now, but his own work was far from over. Gulp. The cameraman struggled to swallow his saliva. Cake. At the same time, an ant was split cleanly in half from top to bottom by Jin Wu's hands. He then took a look around him. The number of ants had decreased significantly, and there were just over half of them remaining. He killed so many ants that he had lost count now, but his breathing remained even and unperturbed. In all honesty, he found this place far easier to manage when compared to the uppermost floors of the demon's castle. Hey, should I increase my speed a bit more? Glance. Jin Wu sneaked a glance at the floor, and he immediately issued an order to the puffs of black smoke rising up from the corpses of the countless ants. Rise up. Chapter 119 The cameraman felt a creeping chill crawl all over his skin. Awa what's the meaning of this? What was about to happen here? He was deep inside a cave where breezes shouldn't exist. Yet this eerily chilly air inexplicably brushed past his back. A hey, now that I think about it our broken bar. Just as he began questioning whether the surroundings has become too quiet or not a broken bar. Ki i e e e thick, heavy screams resumed it out within the queen's chamber and countless black hands began shooting out from the ground. Tuck tuck a broken bar. The hands grabbed the ground and began pulling themselves out. Hock. The cameraman unwittingly gasped out in pure fright. His eyes were opened wider, and his breathing grew rough and heavy. He was a rank A hunter yet he could scarcely believe the things taking place, so what would the viewers at home watching be feeling right now? While the cameraman remained stewing in his own astonishment, the owners of the black hands finally emerged out of the ground. A ant monsters? At a casual glance, they looked like ant monsters, but then again, endless streams of black smokes were rising from their bodies. It was hard to tell whether these monsters were physical beings or made out of gases. Wouldn't one potentially get that sort of appearance if one carved out the statue of an ant monster using a block of black colored dry ice? Several hundreds of such things rose up from the ground. The cameraman's heart beat so fast and so loud that he couldn't even breath now. Seeing that scene, Ba Kian Ho too gasped out in shock as well. He was comparatively calmer than the cameraman, but that didn't mean he could close his slack jaw. All of Thusi broken bar. Are his summons? Question mark. Unlike the two speechless men, Jin Wu was forming a satisfied grin at the new additions to his shadow army. A nice. Now, the number of his shadow soldiers easily overwhelmed the surviving ant monsters. A with things like this. Looks like I won't have to personally step out now. Jin Wu stored the Demon King's shore swords back to his inventory, and then, issued the very first order to his new soldiers. A go. Don't leave any one of them alive. Kai e e. With the same intensity as back when the ant monsters flooded into the queen's chamber, Jin Wu's new soldiers crashed into their enemies like a tsunami wave. The once seemingly endless swarm of ant monsters was now being swept away by the black tide. A huge cheering roar broke out inside the TV station's situation room. The director shot up from his seat and clapped his hands in happiness. Yes, he's doing it. Seeing those disgusting ant monsters being swept away like that, it felt like his tight chest was being pried open again. It was as if the ten-year-old indigestion plaguing him had finally been flushed away. If only there were no other eyes watching here. He'd have asked the producer to screen capture that moment and have it sent over to him later a so he could relieve his accumulated stress even if it was several months later. Nay, several years later. It was indeed very regretful to see the death of Hunter Minutes by Ungu. When the director saw the scene of the team's lone healer die at the hands of that DMN monster, he thought that the heavens were crashing down on him. Even then, 
if the Korean hunters get out of the ant tunnel safely with the help from that unidentified hunter? A hey, that's all I ask for. The Korean team had already achieved its goal by killing the ant queen, with their only method of propagation gone. There was no need to even repeat the simple fact that the ants would eventually die out in the Jeju Island. And then, what about the Japanese? Indeed, what would happen to the Japanese team? Since they abandoned the important mission right in the middle of it all and escaped with their tail between their legs, there was obviously no need to hand over the promised share of the loot. And not only that, the Koreans could even demand reparation from them, instead, and of course, the footage of the raid selling like hot cakes would be the tasty icing on the cake, too. The complexion of the director brightened like a midday sun. A just where did this massive ball of fortune fall out from? The director's expression, as he continued to stare at the face of Jin Woo in the monitor's screen, remained somewhat confused. It was then. Another employee hurriedly ran towards him. Sir. The director shot up from his seat nearly freaking out of his skull. What is it this time? The director's expression hardened in an instant. His heart began quivering, thinking that maybe another mishap occurred somewhere just as he was beginning to soak himself in the sea of happiness. What with the situation arriving at this point in time, the director was quickly growing resentful of this dumb employee. He even wanted to reach out to cover that employee's mouth and pretend that no bad news was afoot. A looks like I've finally lost it our broken bar. Completely unaware of what his boss was thinking of at that moment, the employee spoke hurriedly with an excited face. We discovered that man's identity. The director's eyes opened up super wide. What was that? Inside the office of the Hunter Association's president, Kuei Jeek, Gagun Hu hurriedly lifted his hand off the crushed armrest. His private doctor sitting next to him turned to look at him. A broken bar association president. A broken bar. Dot, it seems that I got overexcited just now. He unconsciously gripped too tight and this happened. However, how could he not get excited by the scenes he was seeing right now? Indeed, watching Jin Woo's performance playing out on the giant screen made his emotions well up without him even realizing it. If only his body permitted it, he'd have gone there to fight alongside, too. Getting overexcited is not good for your body, sir. Gagun Hua nodded his head. There was only one reason why he, as the association president, wasn't present in the mission control center. Didn't matter whether this subjugation operation ended as a success or a failure, there was a potential risk that he'd strain his heart simply by being there. Even watching the broadcast like this carried enough risk, so the personal doctor had to set up a camp next to Gagun Hua. A maybe, it would have been better to not let him watch the broadcast. The personal doctor worried about his decision for a brief moment. But after seeing the expression etched on the face of the association president, he soon shook his head. Ever since the hunter named Sung Jin Woo appeared on the scene, that wide smile didn't want to leave Ge Gun Hu's face. Hey, that man, that's Sung Jin Woo. In that critical moment, as the despair quickly transformed into a loud cheer, the words association president cried out still rung inside the doctor's ears. Meanwhile, Gagun Hua was beaming widely. A I can't believe this is happening. He then cautiously placed his hand back on the sofa's armrest. Unless he was holding on to something, his entire body would itch too much and he'd be unable to endure it. A but, how did Hunter Sung Jin Woo get there? Initially, he was greatly intrigued by this quandary. The island must be overflowing with the ant monsters, so how did he appear there without anyone else noticing it? But, such a thing wasn't important right now. No, the truly important thing would be that Hunter Sung Jin Woo was there. And with that, the other hunters had hope. Those two were the important things. It was then, Gagun Hua's eyes grew extra large after witnessing the spectacle of Jin Woo creating even more soldiers by extracting shadows out from the dead ant monsters. A that friend, he lied to me didn't he? Who could have guessed that there were well more than only about a hundred summons? Even at a casual glance, there must have been over three hundred. Easy. However, Gagun Huey didn't look like someone who'd been lied to. No, a smile of contentment was filling up his face. Instead, a he said that he wanted to fight against the monsters, didn't he? Gagun Huey could now understand a bit more of why the youth said those words to him back then. After all, he possessed such incredible power so no monsters out there should phase him. For sure, 
Jin Wu looked like he was enjoying himself as he fought the monsters. It was to the extent that the viewers watching felt a deep stirring within their hearts. However a broken bar. Why did Hunter Sung Jin Wu, who so dearly wished to battle monsters that badly, ask to be left out of the Korean raid team? A he must have had an important reason behind that decision. Gagun Hua nodded his head. Without such a reason, there was just no way that a man who formed an expression like that during battle would willingly walk away from a ranged team. When his thought arrived at that point, Gagun Hua grew very curious about what could possibly be Jin Wu's reason. Tang, Tang. Jin Ah was studying in her bedroom, but she heard those loud noises and hurriedly came out to the living room. Mum? I, I'm sorry. That was too loud. Wasn't it? Jin Ah shook her head. Mom had already lowered the volume of the TV until not much could be heard so she'd not interrupt her daughter's studies. Jin Ah didn't feel like unduly burdening her any more than that. Besides all that, what's going on? Is the TV broken? Not sure. It just stopped working all of a sudden. Where's Oppa? He's right ha broken bar. Mom turned around to look, only to gasp out in surprise. Oh, my. Where did he go? But. He was here only about a second ago. Jin Ah tilted her head and opened Jin Wu's bedroom door. Oppa? He wasn't even in the bathroom, either. Jin Ah proceeded to scour the entirety of the apartment before turning around towards her mum. What were you watching together just now? The Jeju Island raid. A broken bar. Suddenly, Jin Ah was overcome with a certain ominous foreboding. Now that she thought about it, the entire apartment building was bustling with loud noises ever since a little while ago. An oh way I a broken bar. Jin Ah hurriedly ran back inside her room and switched on her phone. When she did a broken bar, just as the vigorous, loud cheers exploded out from the floors above and below hers, Jin Ah's eyes opened wider as she finally confirmed the scene playing out within her phone's screen. Oppa, after utterly massacring every single ant monster found inside the queen's chamber, Jin Wu stored his soldiers back inside his shadow. Even now, ants that had been spread out to the rest of the island were scurrying back to the ant tunnel. He judged that his priority should be placed on guiding the hunters out of here to somewhere safe before more ants showed up. A we have the injured here to worry about, too. Jin Wu strode towards the hunters, beside Baek Yun Ho and the cameraman. The rest weren't in a good shape. Cha Hien was still unconscious, and the three others had suffered some serious wounds, as well. Jin Wu asked while looking around, What about minutes by Ung Yu Hunter Nim? Baek Yun Ho shook his head with a hardened expression, a broken bar. Not saying anything else, Jin Wu brought out the potions and began treating the hunters one by one. Since the potions would become useless once they leave his hands, he had to personally feed each of the hunters. M. Ma broken bar. After drinking the potions, hunters began regaining their consciousness. What's this? M. Tej Ayu quickly raised his upper torso up, touched all over his body, and spat out a gasp of amazement. What the a broken bar? Both Choi Jong In and Ma Dong Wook recovered from the numerous injuries on their bodies in no time. Ma broken bar. Cough, cough. Choi Jong In had no clue on what had transpired here. So as soon as he laid his eyes on Jin Wu, he was taken aback rather greatly. Mr. Sung Jin Wu, what are you doing here? Let's talk after getting out of this place first. Oh our broken bar. Choi Jong In took a look around and nodded his head. They were still stuck inside the deepest part of the ant tunnel. This was no place to idly chat away, indeed. Instructor Sung, having regained his eyesight. Ma Dong Wook was able to reach out and grab Jin Wu's hands. Were you the one fighting off those ants? Thank you. Thank you so much. Jin Wu replied in the same manner to him as well. Let us get out of here first. Got it. Finally, Cha Hien, standing before her, a frown formed on Jin Wu's face. A something's not right. Her broken bar her aura's far too weak. While feeling a sense of foreboding, Jin Wu raised her head and cautiously poured the potion down her mouth. Sure enough, a message quickly popped up in his view, tearing. When the remaining HP is less than 10%, it is impossible to recover HP with healing potions. Jin Wu's expression crumpled. When he slowly pulled out his hand supporting her head, it was soaked in her blood. A, a broken bar a broken bar. That ant beastard. That creature inflicted a fatal blow to the strongest person among the Korean hunters, Cha Hien. 
with nothing but a single blow. The sole reason why these hunters were still alive wasn't that they were strong. On the contrary, that beast had simply toyed with them for a little while, that was all. Jin Wu's expression hardened. A in any case, I got a broken bar. Cha Hien's injuries took priority. If her wounds couldn't be healed by the potions, then she needed to get out of this island as soon as possible and get a healer type hunter to heal her. A sap. Let's hurry. Jin Wu carefully picked her up and stood up to leave. Other hunters also stood up. As they were preparing to leave the Ant Queen's chamber, Jin Wu walking in front of the pack suddenly spat out a long sigh. A, a broken bar a broken bar. Beck Yun Ho could guess the reason why. Jin Wu entrusted Cha He in over to Beck Yun Ho. Suddenly dumped with the responsibility of carrying her around, Beck Yun Ho formed a flustered expression, and he hurriedly raised his voice. I would like to help. Jin Wu looked at the hunters present, including Beck Yun Ho, and told them all in no uncertain terms. Do not ever step forward during the fight. It'll be faster that way. But, Mr. Sung Jin Wu, that means a broken bar. Cho Yung Hoon was still oblivious to what had transpired before, so he was about to speak up his opinion. But Ma Dong Wook stopped him and shook his head. He may not have seen the situation unfold with his own eyes, but through his perception, he was able to detect how Jin Wu annihilated the swarm of ants from the beginning until the end. Jin Wu was right about this. However, Be Kian Ho still butted in. Sung Jin Wu Hunter Lim. Jin Wu turned his head to look at him. I understand full well that you're strong. I can confidently say that no one here knows that better than me. However a broken bar, Be Kian Ho spoke with a serious expression on his face. However, You've already summoned far too many creatures by now. But, why would that be a problem? When Jin Wu stared at him with a confused expression, Beck Yun Ho got flustered and quickly added more explanation. You must have had exhausted a lot of your magical energy by now. What would happen if you completely spent them? It were broken bar so that's what he was talking about. Jin Wu guessed from Beck Yun Ho's words that the other hunters utilizing the summoning magic had to be using a lot of magic energy to summon even a single creature. A I'm sure there aren't any real reason to reveal that my shadow soldiers don't need any magic energy right? Even without him saying anything, his soldiers wouldn't look like ordinary summons to these people's eyes, anyway. So, Jin Wu decided to change the story ever so slightly. My summons don't require as much magic energy as you think. You don't need to worry about me. Excuse me? Both Be Yun Ho and the cameraman exclaimed out at the same time. He controlled that many summoned creatures all at once, yet he was saying that the magic energy usage wasn't high. Then, just what was his weak point, then? A, a broken bar a broken bar. Realizing that explaining would take up too much time, he simply turned towards the cave up ahead, instead, with excellent timing. The waves of ant monsters were rushing inside the chamber. A wow, there are still so many of them. Their side had someone in a critical condition. So, he couldn't afford to waste time here. Jin Wu activated the Sovereign's territory for maximum efficiency. The ground beneath his feet was immediately dyed in black. Just as he was done with preparations to call his soldiers back out again, an ominous, creepy air blew in from the other side of the cave. A, a broken bar a broken bar. Jin Wu shifted his gaze over to where that eerie aura was coming from. There was this one individual among the masses of ants. It looked similar to the others but it was a completely different type of monster compared to the others. A.R., so that's the one. Jin Wu instantly recognized the A Ant King, and likewise, the Ant King recognized Gin Wu as well. Taking its time, the Ant King slowly walked over to him. A human a broken bar you seem to possess a pretty strong aura. It even imitated Goat to Rai Uji's speech pattern. Hunters immediately recalled the nightmare of a few moments ago and flinched grandly as soon as spotting that ant monster. On the other hand, Jin Wu showed no outward ripples and simply stared at the creature without saying a word. Eventually, the Ant King stood before Jin Wu. Are you the king of humans? A broken bar dot dot ha. Huh? An insect that knows how to speak. Well, I'll be. When Jin Wu replied with a less than impressed expression on his face, the Ant King's own expression crumpled unsightly. The power the Queen bestowed it with, and the power it gathered through the A gluttony skill at the moment the Ant King unleashed all of its magic energy, 
Its body suddenly ballooned up greatly in size. Its height, which used to be around the same as Jin Wu's, grew by at least 1.5 times taller. The Ant King then screeched out loudly right in front of Jin Wu's nose. Kia ee 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 ee. Jin Wu didn't even blink once, and instead, a smirk formed on his lips. Yup, now you're acting properly like an insect. And then, he himself unleashed his own magical energy. Chapter 120 All communications with Goto and his team have been cut off. The Association President Matsumoto Shigeo's complexion became ashen. The Association employee next to him presented a receiver and asked politely, Would you like to hear the last communication, sir? Matsumoto Shigeo snatched the receiver away from the employee's hand and put it on his head, before nodding once. Soon. The recorded sound clip began playing. An ant a broken bar. You seem to possess a pretty strong aura. Are you area broken bar the king? A eh, that's right. I'm the king. A eh, goto san. A eh, you act you act. A eh, cock. A eh, you. You have broken bar. You. You. What? What the hell are you you? Ooh, beep. That's where the communication ends, sir. Matsumoto's face, as he took off the receiver was as hard as a rock. The creepy noises and the horrible screech the monster made in between the chatter he couldn't picture any other situation where those sounds would come out of. An ant monster using a human language, and goat to Ryuji was killed by that thing. Such an eventuality was not within his calculations. He and his compatriots had definitely planned everything out, and made preparations for every eventuality. So why a broken bar? The ends of Matsumoto Shigeo's fingers trembled almost imperceptibly. A broken bar dot sir? Only after he realized that the gazes of his employees were focused on his trembling fingertips did Matsumoto Shigeo carefully hide his hands. He quickly changed the topic. Where is the monster that a broken bar? No, where is the talking monster? Right now, he couldn't bring himself to say the words are the monster that killed Goto Ryuji. It's disappeared. Sir, what do you mean, disappeared? It was a creature capable of killing Gota Ryuji. So, how could the satellite equipped with the magic energy detection camera keeping a close eye on Jeju Island not pick up on such a powerful monster? The employee seemed to have figured out what his boss was about to say, and he pointed at the monitor once more. That spot of light is the magic energy emitted from the monster at that moment. The magic energy detection camera displayed the emitted magic energy as spots of lights. The bigger the spot of light appearing on the monitor, the more powerful the existence was. Once spots of lights belonging to Goto Ryuji and the hunters around him disappeared, the larger, brighter light vanished quickly, as well. Oh! My god a broken bar. Matsumoto Shigeo spat out a shocked gasp. The unknown enemy was in perfect control of its magical energy. A that was why a broken bar. Because it was such a monster, that a broken bar. That was why the research team failed to notice the creature before. It was, without a doubt, a perfect failure. And as a punishment, Japan just lost ten of her elite hunters, among them the best hunter in the country. For a result of a single oversight, it was very, very painful price to pay. Even worse, the price most likely hadn't been fully paid yet, either. A when that nonsensical monstrosity crosses the ocean and enters the cow country a broken bar, even though Matsumoto Shigeo tried to shake them off, the horrifying images continued to fill up his head. It was then, we found it. The beastard has reappeared again. Matsumoto Shigeo's eyes shot open wider. Where is the creature? It's inside the ant queen's chamber, sir. A broken bar. Only the ants returning to the ant tunnel, as well as the Korean hunters facing off against them, remained in that place. They must be fighting with everything they had, but unfortunately, their opponent this time easily exceeded everyone's imaginations. A and the end, even the Koreans will be finished for good. That's what he believed, but then, Matsumoto Shigeo's brows shot up instantly. A, a broken bar? There was another spot of light that suddenly appeared right next to that horrifying monster. W what's the meaning of this? Matsumoto Shigeo gasped out in sheer astonishment and quickly looked at his employees. One of the employees affiliated with the research team, urgently shook his head. It, it's also our first time seeing this, sir. That spot of light was as big and bright as the monsters. No, 
Maybe it was even bigger than that. What was even more astonishing was the fact that there were hundreds of smaller light spots swirling around that large one. Even the head researcher of Japan's research team, who had been analyzing the spy images for many years now, had never seen such a phenomenon before. A heartbroken bar. Seeing the mesmerizing sight of the sea of lights repeatedly separating into tiny pieces before gathering back together. All those present couldn't help but gasp out in admiration. However, Matsumoto Shigeo didn't have the time to leisurely stew in his emotions right now. The Korean team. They must be broadcasting the raid even now, aren't they? If the Korean team was still strutting around like that, that could also mean that the broadcast was still ongoing. Matsumoto Shigeo was beset with curiosity and wanted urgently to find out just what was going on here. The Korean team's broadcast bring that up to the main monitor. When he shouted out, the super large screen in the middle of the Japanese mission control center was immediately filled with the image of a certain young man having a stare down with an ant monster. After seeing that man's face, Matsumoto Shigeo nervously swallowed his saliva. The lone strand of sweat trickled down his temple and pulled on the bottom of his chin. A that mana broken bar. That man is the source of that massive light spot. And then, the giant ant monster standing in front of that man. That thing was at least over 1.5 times larger than regular ant monsters. They were only looking at the thing through the monitor, yet the sheer pressure emanating from that thing managed to quicken their heartbeats. A, a broken bar. Matsumoto Shigeo's expression hardened even further. It was then. The ant monster made its move. The ant king's fist powerfully slammed into Jin Wu's face. Slam. Jin Wu's back nearly bent backwards, but he stomped down and withstood the hit. A, a broken bar. The ant king had struck with all of its might behind that punch, so it couldn't help but get taken by surprise. You can't a broken bar withstand my power? The ant king struck out with a simple plan to kill this puny human in one hit, but instead of sending him flying away, the whole thing simply ended with his head turning slightly away. Too bad, there was no time to remain surprised, because Jin Wu's own fist flew in afterwards. Swish, slam. The ant king was smacked right in the middle of its face and it flew away to crash into the wall on the far side of the cavern. Kaboom! As if a meteor had collided there. The wall caved in deeply, although it was only for a short while, the impact force was powerful enough to shake the entire ant tunnel. What kind of an ant talks this much? When the A-Live broadcast got suddenly cut off, and the static screen showing the message of about the station encountering a technical difficulty appeared on their TV screens, Countless viewers were left devastated and stunned by what they saw. The hunters a broken bar. What's happening to the hunters? What was up with that ant just now? What the hell? How can you cut the broadcast off right there? The scenes of an ant monster suddenly appearing without warning, and then, it proceeding to systematically dismantle the hunters one by a near broken bar. The viewers celebrating after the death of the Ant Queen felt like a bucket of cold water was poured down on them by that horrifying scene. Not too long afterwards, the static screen with the A technical difficulty message went away and the MC appeared there, instead. A heartbroken bar. Everyone, this news just came in. With a sorrowful voice, he relayed the death of Hunter Minutes by Ungu. And he also added that the safety of the hunters remaining in the ant tunnel couldn't be a guaranteed, either. God DM Minute. They got the ant queen, so why are they dying now? What about Japan? Isn't it supposed to be a united team or something? Where are the DMN Japanese? Some people raged on, some people worried about their safety, while some others grieved. The news of the hunters risking their lives potentially meeting with a grisly fate spread out like an uncontrollable wildfire. Weirdly enough, the audience rating actually rose up higher than ever before, even though the raid broadcast had been cut off for a while now. AR The MC's expression brightened considerably after receiving an urgent message. A I just heard the news that an unknown hunter has appeared on the scene right at this moment. We will immediately recommence with the broadcast right away. Those words were more than enough to inject much needed vitality into the fatigued eyes of the viewers staying put in front of their TV screens. Soon, the live feed was restored, and a broken bar. What the heck? 
these are broken bar. The viewers were greeted by the black soldiers filling up their TV screens, and they all shot up from their seats. They then saw those black soldiers fighting tooth and nail against the waves upon waves of ants flooding into the ant queen's chamber. The camera moved around to take in the unfolding events before locking onto a single young man. He was too far away and it was hard to see what he looked like. Ah the armored soldiers are apparently the creatures summoned by that hunter on your screen. Also, I just heard that most of the hunters are alive and safe, as well. The viewers watching on with nervous tension all cried out in elation from that news. And then, they began cheering for that unidentified hunter. Yes, go and smash them all. You're doing great. Push them back. Let's go. And finally a broken bar. When that unidentified hunter summoned an even great number of soldiers to completely massacre the ants a broken bar. People punched the sky with their fists and celebrated wildly. Those who had lost their families and friends to the ants and sought revenge shed tears as the cathartic moment played out in their screens. As if he was waiting for the perfect timing, the MC's heightened voice came out from the speakers just in the nick of time. AR. We finally identified the unknown hunter. The eyes and ears of every single viewer out there were now turned towards their screens. Just who was that man? Just what was the identity of a man capable of rescuing rank S hunters from a place crawling with rank S monsters? A. He's the 10th rank S hunter of South Korea. Sung Jin Woo. He's a mage type hunter specializing in summoning magic. And so, the viewers grew even more cheerful from the fact that a hunter possessing such an incredible ability was not a Japanese, but a Korean like them. Countless ants were soon taken care of in no time at all. Just as the hunters were getting ready to escape from the ant tunnel, yet another wave of ants appeared. Ah, you isn't that a broken bar? The ant monster that appeared just before the broadcast got cut off the first time was now leisurely walking forward while pushing past the swarm of ants. Since there weren't that many ants with wings to begin with, and the shape of its face was different from everything else, it wasn't that hard to tell that monster apart. The viewers were instantly thrown into confusion. What the hell? I thought that B-Stard was already dead. Why is the thing appearing again? The winged ant monster stood before Hunter Sung Jin Wu. Those viewers who understood a bit about the compatibility of different abilities grew deeply anxious when the two stood face to face. Aiku, he's going to get killed here. Why would a mage type give up on the safety of distance like that? It's not too late so run away. That monster was strong enough to blow away Hunter Cha Hien, a melee type hunter, with a single blow. They thought that it was beyond obvious how things would turn out now. It was already distressing enough to see those two glare at each other in close proximity, but then, the DMN and monster suddenly grew larger and larger as well. Every viewer watching their TV screens cried out in shock, and then a broken bar, pow. Those with weaker constitutions squeezed their eyes shut at that moment. They thought that the moment the monster's punch found its target, the hunter's head would explode. However, contrary to their expectations, the hunter was fine. A ha, a mage withstood a punch strong enough to knock out the tank Kamadong Wook in one hit. The eyes of the viewers grew wider and wider, and then a broken bar. Slam. The ant monster got shoved deeply into the cave wall. A broken bar, a broken bar, a broken bar. Most viewers required a little bit of time to process what just transpired. But when the camera zoomed in on the ant king half buried in the cave wall a broken bar. Wooah. Yet another round of loud cheering exploded out. Hock. The cameraman's jaw fell to the floor. When Hunter Sung Jin Woo was struck by the ant's fist. He flinched in surprise. Even Cha Hien lost her consciousness from that hit. But then, Hunter Sung Jin Wu blew away the ant monster, instead, the very same monster, that toyed around with six rank S hunters as if it was nothing. No wonder he'd gasp out a hock. A were the rank S hunters that week? No, of course not. The Korean hunters bravely fought and managed to defeat the rank S boss, the ant queen. So, the mutated ant monster that made a nutter fool out of those hunters was the weird one, and Hunter Sung Jin Woo, who blew away that weird mutated ant, was an even weirder one. Gulp. The cameraman suppressed his agitation and swallowed his dry saliva. The reactions of other hunters weren't all that different, either. While everyone was staring at Jin Woo with excited eyes, 
Only Choi Jong In began looking around in his vicinity, and he could see mountains of ant corpses. He initially thought that those were the result of the hunters working together while he was out cold. But now, having witnessed Jin Wu's power, his thoughts had changed. A at our broken bar could it be broken bar? Mr. Sung Jin Wu alone was responsible for a broken bar. After taking a rough count of the dead ants, Choi Jong In's eyes began trembling non stop. Gai -e -e. A beastly screech exploding out without warning caused his head to snap back. The Ant King extricated itself out of the wall and displayed its rage. The air within the Ant Queen's chamber was quivering noticeably. A ho ho! Jin Wu stared at the Ant King with a genuine surprise. The damage he dealt was far less than he thought. Is it because he broken bar of the exoskeleton? The black. Tough shell covering the entirety of that beast all day whatever that thing was, it had already exceeded being a normal organic matter. In that case, he'd use brute force to shatter that shell. The thing that could break one's armor wasn't a sword or a spear. No, it was a hammer. Jin Wu's shoulder and arm muscles expanded, thick veins bulging visibly on his skin. The air grew thicker and heavier as it descended all around him. The Ant King stopped screeching and shifted its horrifyingly crumpled expression towards Jin Wu. You dare. As the two of them walked closer, the distance between them shortened faster and faster. Soon, Jin Wu and the Ant King stood right before each other again. And then, without a hint of hesitation or mercy, they began exchanging countless attacks each thumping hit carrying all their might. Slam. Kaboom. Boom. The hunters watching from the sideline were all stupefied into silence. The shock wave from the collision of magic energy whenever Jin Wu and the Ant King exchanged blows rocked the ant tunnel itself. It was so severe that these top-ranked hunters, renowned for their mastery over wielding their magic energy, felt their innards tumble. Wu Upa broken bar. Are you all right? I... I'm fine. The cameraman was only a rank A, but he still tried his best to suppress the contents of his stomach from rising up. He was even experiencing vertigo, too. A Wu Wook a broken bar. Even then A even as his complexion paled greatly, he could still maintain his smile all because he broken bar. Slam. 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 A how can a lone hunter do that against such a monster a broken bar? A broken bar. Dot because, he saw a ray of hope. Kwabu Hunter Sung Jin Wu might be getting wounded from that exchange, but the outer shell of the Ant King was definitely being broken as well. 